All right, everyone. Hope you're having a good Thursday. I also hope you've been enjoying regular releases on the channel again. It certainly has been a big de-stressor to me to know that new videos are coming out once a week. So again, expect a new one on Saturday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. I am really excited to do this stream, so let's talk about Jolteon as a Pokémon and why I am doing this run again. Jolteon for base stats 65 HP and attack 60 defense, 110 special and 130 speed giving it a 25.39% chance to crit. This thing is a critting machine. For move pool, it starts with tackle, tail whip, quick attack, and thunder shock. Then through level up, it gets sand attack, which is a godsend. Um, then beyond that, double kick at level 30, pin missile at 36, thunder wave not really useful, agility, you might think it's useful for the badge boost, but like not as much with Jolteon, thunder, terribly inaccurate so I'm not going to use it. Uh, like all electric types it has a completely awful TM and HM learn set but it does get body slam which is a saving grace. That said in my last video I ended up using stall strategies with a combination of toxic and reflect. I do not want to do that today. The sand slash on the champions team loves to crit and my goal is to bypass that strategy completely with this run. Um, also notably, electric types in Generation 1 only learn Thunderbolt through TM, so that's the only way I'm going to have access to it. Luckily, Lieutenant Surge is the third gym leader and not like the seventh gym leader. That would make electric types so bad. Imagine, imagine if electric, imagine if Blaine was an electric type specialist and Giovanni was a ground type specialist. That would be hilarious. Um, and that actually... That could happen because it tends to be the case that the gym leader that follows the one that you just defeated is strong against the one you just defeated. Like, Brock is weak to Misty, Misty is weak to Surge, Surge's damage is resisted by Erika, Erika is weak to Koga, Koga is weak to Sabrina. Then the, the formula breaks because Sabrina is not weak to Blaine, but his Pokemon have strong physical attacks, so I like to think that the formula is completely flawless. By the way, it continues all the way through the lead four. Um, my former personal best with this, uh, I should actually bring up the documentation so that I get the exact stats. I write everything down in a spreadsheet. Some people have asked me, is this spreadsheet available for others to look at? And the answer is no, because it has results that have not been released yet. And I don't want to spoil people. So unfortunately... I, I could put like a spoiler warning on it, but like there'll be someone who clicks on it and gets angst, uh, angry or upset or sad, and I don't want that. Um, formerly, Jolteon uh, did not get a good result. It has one of the worst fully evolved Pokemon results currently, with a time of one hour, one minute, and ten seconds. With two resets, it finished the game at level 71, with a game time of three hours and 59 minutes. I only did two attempts with two attempts with it, and I was trying to be very consistent, and I think that that is largely what caused a lot of the problems. We're going to try and be a little bit less consistent today, but fast in general. After all, I want to get this thing into the... Uh, I would like to get it into the A tier and be under 50 minutes, but, but I don't know if that's going to be possible today. I do know, however, that it is possible, because Ike the Killer has set a 48-minute Jolteon time. So, 48 minute Jolteon is possible. Uh, I just don't know if we're going to get there today. If we don't, that's okay. Hopefully, we get it under 55 minutes. I think I will be disappointed if we don't get it under 55 minutes, but either way, we're getting it into the B tier. That B tier seems like the minimum today. Uh, well, I, I think if I have really bad luck or something, maybe C tier today, but I'll get it under an hour. Um, I'm hoping for B tier and dreaming of A tier. It's great to have everyone here. Um, I don't have a lot left to say. I think we should just get into this. This stream's gonna run a little bit differently than my regular streams. Normally, what I do is I do a first attempt. I just play through the entire game. Then I, um, I'll go back and I'll optimize, check damage ranges, stuff like that. 
then try again. Today I'm going to do things a little bit differently because the early game is very weird for Jolteon and I want to figure out exactly how I should be playing it before doing my first full attempt. So I'm going to start by doing risky Brock attempts at low levels and we will see what level it feels like Jolteon can get by Brock consistently. Then we're going to bake in the Brock split for the rest of the day so that we're not just like doing an attempt with an, a, level, a level 15 Brock split and you definitely don't need level 15. Uh, and then the whole run after that is just completely thrown off. So I figure getting this information first makes the most sense. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, do note... I always play with a modified ROM to make a few things just a little bit more convenient for me and to minimize things like making the mistake of having the speed on medium tech speed for the entire run. It just always sets it to fast so I don't have to do that manually before starting the game. I also play with no encounters on the early routes of the game in Mount Moon. This is just so we have accurate comparisons between Pokemon. Uh, and RNG luck thrown at us by the game that does not relate to the Pokemon doesn't creep into the results because that would not be good or fair. Yeah, as you can see, this thing's a crit machine. It has a medium fast growth rate though, which is not great for the early game, but overall not terrible for a solo run. Hey, I'm playing pretty well. I haven't played at all today. This is my warm up. I played Platinum yesterday. That game is long. Like, my recording session was like five hours. <laughs> uh. It's like, the game is like four times longer than Yellow. Oh, no. I'm an Electrotype, but you can get... Electrotypes can be poisoned in this game, or can be paralyzed in this game. It's not like Generation 6. I think in Generation 6, they can't even be poisoned by Stun Spore and stuff like that, but... Uh, if I'm wrong about that, I apologize. Like, I don't have a lot of experience with those games. Hey, that is great. Okay, well, we'll just knock this out because... Well, if it sand attacks us a lot, it's gonna be... It's like, that's like... Fr yeah, it's a free level. Um, I think this guy may be a free level, the Metapod guy, but we're going to skip him for now. I'm going to just try and go and immediately get to uh, Brock. And then we're going to see what Light Years Junior training is like. Uh, Light Years Junior training. Uh, blackout training against the Light Years Junior trainer. Ha! <laughs> Every time Scott bonks into a wall starts playing the next Roots theme. Yeah. We should like make some game mechanic that's triggered by bonks or something like that. Or like every time I bonk into the wall, like the enemy gets a critical hit in the next battle. So there's like, just like, ah, uh, 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 I gotta make a video like that. It'll be like a regular YouTuber's video where it's just like every time I do X, the opponent, every time I bonk into the wall, the opponents get stronger or something like that. <laughs> All right, this is actually decent. So I can knock that out. And then I'm going to learn Sand Attack uh, in the place of uh, Tackle so that I can Tail Whip this and not get knocked out, and get knocked out of, by it intentionally. I, I know that I have Pidgey. I shouldn't have got Pidgey, but it's fine. I, he'll just knock it out and then I'll deposit it in the PC. So I think next time we might want to skip the uh what's it called the mart in viridian city and then mart after um brock which is not the standard way of doing it okay i'm actually gonna i think i'm gonna knock the sentry out this time Ooh, it's okay so it might get me okay it gets me again maybe two blackouts here or three with without the pidgeotto Um, just so everyone's aware, I'm counting blackouts as a separate metric now. So it, like, uh, I can tell you it's over on my overlay. We, uh, we're tallying it up separately. Okay. 
I bet I'll defeat them right at level 10. Like, it, it's probably, it's just going to line up with that. Oh, buy potions or something before blocking out. Yeah, maybe I do the Viridian City um, March just to get potions so that I have those potions uh, when defeating, after defeating Brock. But just don't get the Pokeball. I think that's it. Do you plan to show stat experience anywhere? No. The number ranges from 0 to 65,000. It's kind of ugly to show on screen. I I've thought about showing it as a little like experience bar underneath each stat, but overall that feels a little bit cluttered. And uh, it, it gets like very visually, like it's very like visually maximalist. And I think my overlay is already like trending away from minimalism to a point that I'm not particularly comfortable with. So I'm not a huge fan of the idea of showing my stat experience on screen. I show the number of vitamins that I can use on screen. Um, but I don't know if I'll ever show stat experience. Like the in-depth. I show EVs in Generation 3, but they're, they're a lot easier to visually parse. Um, whereas stat experience is less so. Okay. Brock is frustrating at level 10, but I think it's going to be possible. Yeah, so I'm a crit machine. I think uh, I think I should only be tail whipping the Geodude twice. Okay, when it bides, then I go in on Santa attack and tail whip, and then I think I switch back to quick attack. Now that it's not, but then you do this until it can't do anything. The reason I want to not tail whip too much is against the uh, Geodude is because when I crit, it will just bypass my uh, my stat changes and I'll do less damage. Oops. Small mistake attacking into the bide, but I'm still going to get him. Yep. Okay, so this is not bad. Um, we're going to look at some numbers here because uh, I'm a numbers guy. So let's like go through. This is what it recorded while I was just playing. So now we have information about all the trainers and all the events that were happening. So Brock at level 10, we want to ex examine some damage ranges. So quick attack is a 29 hit without any tail whips on the Geodude, but we can apply tail whips to the Ge Geodude with this um, drop down menu here. You can't see the drop down, I don't think. But so if I do one tail whip, then it takes the Geodude down, like, basically less than half the number of hits. And two... Now I'm doing between three and four damage. You can see three and four damage with a regular hit, three and four damage with a critical hit. If I add one more Tail Whip, now regular hit does five to six, but critical hit does three to four. I don't think I want to be in that scenario against the Geodude, because it's just going to be spamming Tackle, that's its only move. If... I'm losing damage and turns by setting up one more tail whip and then critting like four times in a row. That seems like it is a recipe for disaster. So Geodude, I think is gonna be like, maybe like four sand attacks. There's huge diminishing returns on sand attacks once you get to like four, five, six. Uh, let's see, two. so two tail whips takes it down to a nine turn. No, it probably still makes sense to set up full sand attacks. That's like the battle is long enough that setting up more sand attacks will help. Um, and then the onyx, obviously, I want to do maximum tail whips. Like it's gonna bide enough that I'll I'll just the onyx is kind of like mindless because whenever it uses bide, you want to spam something into it. I think sand attack to like minus three first, then tail whip so that when I'm going back to attack, I'm doing decent damage. How many tail whips do I need to really get it? Okay, so two. So I basically shouldn't attack the Onyx until I have two Tail Whips, otherwise it's going to do such insubstantial damage. And then once I'm doing two, even if I crit, we're doing the same amount of damage. And then beyond there, it's just bonus damage for non-crit hits. Uh, and the sixth Tail Whip does provide a benefit, so it's not just um, useless spam. Because I can always spam out um, Sand Attack if it's not, like, not doing anything anymore, and then there's slightly less text. That'll save a tiny bit of time, like the tiniest amount of time. Uh, not enough to be super substantial, but 
yeah, this is a huge improvement already. So in my previous run with Jolteon, I did Brock at level 13, but I'm bleeding, I'm probably bleeding three to four minutes by doing that because I'll defeat all the trainers in Viridian Forest, probably fight some wild Pokemon. And then when I fight Brock, I'm gonna have roughly the same chance of beating him. So let's, we're gonna, I'm gonna use three pre-fight rare candies. This will not be 100% accurate because stat experience does give an asymmetrical boost when you're at a lower level and your stat experience, or when you're, I should be more precise. When the stat experience is a low value stat experience, it's because you take the square root of the stat experience when factoring it into the stat calculation. So just know that these, my Jolteon's probably going to be better than this for the fight if I went in at level 13. But at level 13... So I'm going to knock the Geodude out faster. That's great. Um, I'm going to knock the Onyx out a lot faster too. But the problem is here is really like I'm just trying to avoid hits long enough to hit these two Pokemon with Quick Attack and to lower their defenses and stuff like that. So to me, it makes more sense to just do the slightly riskier strategy here and save a bunch of time. Yeah, you can also Thundershock into Bide. That is true. Yeah. Could not care less. Maybe Scott's thought should stay in his head. Okay, sure. Like, uh, you have no obligation to be here, Fartworm. Also, good username. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, let's go back now. We're gonna do this again. I think the play here is definitely we fight the junior trainer, blackout training on that, probably blackout three to four times, get to level 10, then fight Brock immediately. We bypass. Um, we bypass so many trainers. Uh, Ben, we don't, we don't need to ban him. Um, he can just chill. I've always said on my channel, it's totally cool if people, uh, come after me. Oh, well, I don't know if I can restore the... Oh, yeah, I can. Well, yeah, in the future, uh, in the future, Soul, let's not, uh, remove people. If they're just, uh... They're just coming after me. That's totally fine. If they get annoying with it and it's like a uh, hundred messages or something, like ten messages, and it's just like crowding up the chat, then then that's fine. Like, should probably get rid of them then. But uh, totally good if it's like three or four messages and they're just like, "You're bad at this game." Okay, yeah, I know. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> that's the whole point of this channel. Also, I, I just in general, I'll say this now before I start again. Um, um, I'm just gonna say this now, but like, I think that the, in gaming, specifically in gaming, there there can be a lot of um, uh, there can be a lot of like toxicity because there's a sense of entitlement sometimes to like being good at games. At least that's the way it was when I grew up playing games, and. I don't want to contribute to that, so I'm totally, I'm going, like, even though sometimes I definitely do feel like, oh yeah, I have the right strategy, this is the best strategy, like, no one else understands, blah, 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 blah. Um, even though I feel like that sometimes, uh, that's, like, not who I want to be. Who I want to be is just, like, I'm just, like, gonna try and be humble all the time, and I think being humble is, like, an active act. You decide to be humble and you decide to take the perspective that's like, okay, I'm gonna challenge my ideas, I'm gonna challenge my biases here, because like, I love rest, and maybe rest isn't the solution. Uh, spoiler alert, it is the solution for Jolteon. <laughs> the champion sand slash necessitates that, and uh, unless you have some extremely creative thinking, uh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it in a different way. Uh, Errant Umbra, thank you for the 499, I appreciate it. Watching Scott makes it look a lot easier than it actually is. Well, I've been doing this for like three and a half years now, so hopefully it's starting to look a little bit easier than uh, than it is. Okay, let's do this. Jolteon. Uh, this is attempt number two. Today. 
attempt number four overall. And I've only had two, uh, two finishes so far. I'm going to count the last one as an attempt because I did obtain information that was useful. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh I'm really grateful. Uh Dr. I think Koof said like uh it's it's amazing that this channel is in a constant slap fest. Like I don't know, like I'm I feel like very grateful for my audience. All of you have been there's the occasional person that really, really wants to tell me I'm doing a bad job. And like that's okay. Um but overall I, I think like Everyone is very respectful and everyone is willing to lend a hand. Uh, the sheer number of people that volunteer and put in ridiculous hours helping me. Um, wow. I, I'm always just like very, very, very grateful. I feel, I feel like I don't use the word a lot, but I feel blessed. All right. Let's go. This is the first playthrough. I'm going to keep going no matter what happens unless I reset to Brock. Like, I don't know. I don't know what, like, the an unacceptable number of resets to Brock is, but, like, maybe five? Four or five feels starts feeling unacceptable. I think in the final run, we may have to put up with, like, one or two resets to Brock just to get a finish. If I got really obsessive about it and trying trying to get, like, the perfect Brock split... I have the feeling that uh, quickly we will... Um... Oh, I didn't buy the Pokeball. Actually, I just realized that we can get the Pokeball. So I'm going to start again. I realize we can get the Pokeball because I'm going to the Pewter City... I'm going to the Pewter City Center to deposit anyways. So, like, why don't I just pick up the Pidgey and then... Like, uh, to heal anyways, because I need to Blackout Train to there. If you just go straight to the gym and fight the junior trainer, then you get teleported back to Pallet Town, which is obviously not the strat. Also, yes, Jolteon is the punk rock doggo. I didn't say it yet in the video, but that's what I call him. Also, speaking of, like, not punk music, but metal music specifically, my wife and I went to a metal show last night was very fun. I had such a good such a good time. The opening act was so much better than I thought they were going to be. Uh, best opening act I have seen in a long time. A band called Avoid. I didn't know them at all. But the lead singer put the microphone in his mouth and then let go with both of his hands and was doing growls at the same time. And uh, at that moment I was like, okay, I like this band. <laughs> this is like the silliest thing, but it's amazing. Uh, yeah, little things like that. It was great. Uh, the other other band uh, was like uh, Fit for a King and uh, Devil Wears Prada. Or they were like the headliners. I think there was another... Uh, Counterparts was the other band. Also did not know them. Honestly, didn't really know any of the bands, but my wife was like, we should go to this show. Okay. <laughs> so I went. Blacker Dart, thanks for the two dollars. Yeah, Blacko training is significantly faster than Viridian Forest. Uh, Viridian Forest will give it gives like double the experience that Viridian Forest gives. So it's it's much better. I timed it because it it tends to be like per um, I think it's per G, um, Diglett you knock out. It's like twenty two seconds, whereas in the forest you gain like eighty experience over twenty two seconds. Uh, after I catch the Pidgey, my encounters get turned off so that there's no RNG offset. If I needed to fight Pokemon in the forest, then the encounters stay on. If you feel like this is cheating, it is. I'm trying to collect accurate results. If I ever do like an official speedrunning competition, I will play by the rules that they establish. Um, I never want to come across as like being some ultimate authority on... Yeah. Let's go. 
Oh, okay, we, we gotta at least defeat the Diglett. If the Diglett knocks you out, then then you uh then you don't get anything and it's a waste of time. Yeah, so here we're at like uh 304 when this fight started, so let's see how long it takes Jolteon to knock out the Diglett and then get KO'd by the the Sandshrew. You see, it's not taking that long. Like, I had to learn Sand Attack, so it took longer this time, but it's gonna be like what? Oh, it's gonna be real close to 22 seconds. See? See? It's longer there because of the Sand Attack. So this one was like 24 seconds. Sorry, this one was like 26 seconds. My brain math was not good enough. And you can kind of just keep fighting him until you win, or you can like actively try to win at a certain level. I'm gonna fight him one more time than win. Like, I'll black out here, and then, and then I'll fight him to win. This is the primary reason I decided to split blackouts into their own metric. Because it didn't really feel fair to me to rank a Pokemon as three resets this early on. Because, like, I am intentionally losing. This is part of the optimal strategy for Jolteon. Like, it will go faster because of this. So it feels very weird to me to all of a sudden just turn around and lose and go, yeah, that's the best Jolteon play. Like, that's, that's off. Okay, here we go. Brock. Yes! Yes, two misses on tackle three. Okay, the fourth one hits fine. On the fifth one. Well, it's okay. Just two of those, then we attack. Now, I realize I, I did not heal. So if I run out of power points, we will we will just start again. Or I'll reset and then I'll go heal and then come back and save. And we won't do that in the future. But I, I think I'm actually going to be fine. Because this thing is pretty bad. And it goes for bide right away, giving me three free sand attacks. I'll take... I'll actually just set up all the sand attacks and then set up the tail whips, unleashed energy. I'm going to attack now. I'm going to set up some more tail whips. Okay, bide. Perfect. That maxes out the ha <laughs> crit. See there, the crit did way less than the regular hits. But I think we're good actually. If it doesn't bide, okay, it bides. Uh, we'll waste some time here. We don't want to get hit by the bide because it bypasses accuracy checks. Oh, wasting my time. Stop wasting my time, Onyx. Oh gosh, crits. We crit so much. This thing is a critting machine, just barely. Did you see that? Look at that. I just barely made it. Last PP knocks out the snake. Oh. Now, this heal here is probably unnecessary. By the way, withdrawing is very easy. You just spam A, and then when you see the Pokemon show up, you just spam B. Okay, so we have way more special attack than physical attack, and now we can actually use Thundershock, which feels good. Hey, Austin, how's it going? Yeah, if, if, yeah, 540 with an electric type is a good start. Well, I'll have you know there are some electric types that can get better Brock splits. And for those of you who are unaware which Pokemon they are, stick around in about 12, ah, uh, 10 days. Next Saturday. Not this Saturday, next Saturday. Joanna, Scott... Just wanted to say that you're my favorite channel of all time, and I wait every video and stream impatiently. Here's a gift to keep going. Thank you so much. How much crit Jolteon's got? You can see the crit rate in the bottom left. If you're on mobile, pinch to zoom. YouTube added pinch to zoom uh, a while ago. It's a great feature. That was when I started making my overlay look more aesthetically pleasing rather than just making all of the text giant. Which I, for all of, uh, I think it's like 2023's videos. Oh no, no, 2022's videos. The text is just huge. Because I was trying to optimize everything for mobile users. But now I'm just like, well, the text can be smaller and we'll just include the right pieces of information. And that's okay. Uh, we're going to put Quick Attack there so I can easily access it. Slot 1 and Slot 4 are the fastest to access when doing a playthrough. The motion of pushing down on the D-pad is... Uh, is slightly harder for the hand and the ergonomics of the hand. So I like to 
Slot 2 is like the second. Like, um, slot 1, most used move. Slot 4, second most used move. And then slot 2 is the third most used move. And uh, where a sand attack is currently is the move that you're, you don't want to use. Yeah, the Pidgey should probably be withdrawn from Celadon City, you're correct. Honestly, I just took it out because I didn't want to forget it. Like, that's more of a mistake prevention measure rather than a good play. Like, 100% I should just take it out in, uh, in Celadon. But I'll probably forget because I never do that, and I, I ordinarily deposit stuff into the PC in Celadon City. So I'm more likely to forget just following my natural uh, muscle memory. It's probably like two seconds. Probably like two seconds. I, I bet it's like two seconds. Maybe a second. Ah, uh, it, it probably matters, but... Okay, Misty was really easy because I got two crits on the Starmie. It's probably a... It's a... Okay, 12.6% chance to two hit, so I got lucky there. Peep, welcome to Venonat. <laughs> Didn't know that you weren't a member. It's good to have you, though. For everyone who knows, Aaron Peep is... Uh, uh, the person who manages the credit sequence at the end of all my videos. I was talking about this earlier, but people were like, you should redesign the credit sequence. And I was thinking about it like, yeah, I probably eventually should. Um, that makes the most sense. Uh, the AI already has a debuff on sand attack. <laughs> so I figured if I use sand attack, it would be less likely to just chain sand attacks against me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? What is this? Ah. Uh. Gosh! Luckily, Jolteon has big PP because otherwise I'd be going back to the Pokemon Center after this. I still might have to if I miss too much, but like, are you? Well, I can't believe that. Is it like, no, it's definitely not Sand Attack here. <laughs> definitely not Sand Attack there. Uh, Sand Attack here. I'm thinking about this one too. Oh, stop. It's like, is it this? Like, do we knock it out faster like this? Ah, this is the thing about sand attack in Gen 1. You go from 100% accuracy down to 66% accuracy on the first hit, which is just brutal. Like, now I have 40% accuracy. I'm going to lose again, aren't I? Unless the Eevee. The Eevee can be useless sometimes. Okay, we win. Woo! I have enough special attack. I'm, I'm definitely going to just be able to one-shot these two bugs. The Nidoran female is probably going to survive on the next team. Uh, but I don't think it can KO Jolteon, so I will fight her right away. Yeah, it survives. I have a 25% chance of knocking... Oh, no! That's bad. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. <laughs> uh, well, I forgot about the Pidgey Sand uh, Quick Attack. That was the flaw. We'll see if I can beat the rival again. If I can't, we can just restart. Not the end of the world. Let's see how much Quick Attack is doing here. Okay, so I think the Tail Whip once is probably best against this thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm flipping a coin every time I try to attack. There we go. Alright, not bad. I'm gonna do it again. I want to save time. I don't want to open my inventory and heal. Don't make me, game. Don't make me. Are you backporting Chinchou or Lantern? I'm gonna. Ba I've backported every Gen Two Pokemon. I just haven't got around to making videos or like really investing in that series yet. But they're all done. I have like all the files prepared and and everything. So all of Gen Two. My ambition is to make a backported Pokemon ROM and then provide the... eventually provide it for everyone. So that anyone who wants to play the backported Gen 2 Pokemon in Gen 1 can. But that that's far off. There's a lot of things I want to do, but I've been real realizing recently that I have to actually do the things that are important for the business first. Uh, despite the fact that I just want to spend time making the overlay better and release one video every month with like 40 playthroughs in it. 
If I did like 10 times the number of supporters, then we could do that. But currently, uh, the economics do not work out that way, unfortunately. Okay. It's annoying that it's setting up with defense curl. Please just miss a lot of tackles, please. Yeah. 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 No. Stop. Stop. Things annoying. Bide might be faster here, honestly. Maybe Bide for this one, I don't know. But there is time, you have to spend time teaching Bide. Do remember that, every time you think like, hey, maybe Bide's the better choice, like you gotta open the inventory and teach it. How much time does that waste? Well, at least three or four turns, at least. Probably more than that. Inventory stuff takes a lot longer than people think it does. I'm going to get through this route without having to elixir. That's cool. Because I have one Thundershock for the Pidgey. Shelter backport. Wait, what? Shelter backport? Oh yeah, I, I do have to play Shelter. I understand what you're doing there. I will play Shelter. I promise Shelter is coming this year. I've already filmed the playthrough for it, so... <laughs> Gemma miss. But, uh, yeah, Shelter's coming this year. Promise. Promise, promise, promise. Um, is that Lo-Fi or is it Lawful? I think it's Lawful, which is a great name. But Shelter is coming. I, I just want you to please temper your expectations. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> it is a slow growth rate first stage Pokemon. You need to know that. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well, that's unfortunate. Hopefully it doesn't last forever. No, stop. Ridiculous. Ugh. I'm gonna press on because this run's already kind of messy. We'll just see where we get to, but... The only thing they can do here is quick attack me, but I, I should survive three quick attacks. I'm probably heal before the Raticate in case it crits with Hyper Fang. That is, I want to survive that, so I'll, I'll just heal once. Uh, I'm going to redo, like every Pokemon is probably going to get a redo at some point. I, I can't talk about that. Sorry. <laughs> Ah, uh, so many times I, I'm, I'm trying to hold myself back from doing mistakes that I've done in the past. So one mistake I make in the past is every time I have an idea, I tell everyone about it, and then I get really panicked because it takes me a lot longer to execute on the idea than it does to come up with the idea, and then I get into bad places where I'm panicking to finish a project on time, and it doesn't get done, and then it hangs over my head for like a year. No more of that. So, I'm going to redo a bunch of Pokemon. Don't worry. Your favorite has a bad time. I'll get to it. I promise. Abraham, thanks for the $5. Okay. Body Slam. Body Slam's a good move. We're going to get rid of Quick Attack. Just so that it's in the ideal spot. Don't really need Quick Attack anymore because Jolteon is real fast. Jolteon has seven. Oh, you didn't. He burnt me. It's very rare that I have to use my full restore there to get rid of that status condition. But it, you know, you you'd think it would happen a lot more. It's like a ten percent chance, but no, nope, it doesn't actually happen that much. Or like it, it doesn't feel like it happens very much. Oh, well, that battle was easy. Okay. If Tombstoner was a, a ground-type move, I would definitely put it on Jolteon's set. That is the fundamental flaw that Electric-types have in these games. Their coverage is just not very good. 
And I think they thought that double kick was going to be the coverage that Jolteon needs, but its attack stat is just not good enough to really utilize it. it would have been better if it got a water move, then it could actually deal with the rock ground types that it struggles against. But obviously, it would be too good then. Like, it's just... The electric type is just not a good solo running type, and that's fine. A dig is TM28. Yeah, I paralyzed the Raichu right away. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. That Mega Kick would have got me if it crit. Decent. This is like a decent surge time with all the time lost. Like, if I hadn't lost all the time, this would be quite good, I think. I'll heal now because my health is quite low. I was going to try and skip this heal and just teach uh, Thunderbolt in the place of Thundershock and continue, but I'll take it now because the health's low. Nope, don't do that. I think I may still outspeed. No, I don't. I don't outspeed if my uh, uh, if my speed gets quartered. Not quite fast enough to do that. But apparently it can just crit for days, so the wrapping last is not a problem. That was good. If Ice Punch was a team, it would change quite a lot. It would help Executor out a lot. Oh, sorry, not Executor. Electabuzz. They both start with an E. Thanks, brain. Okay. This guy, ground type move. The Q bone. It's not ideal. Can you see that? That's not ideal. But we're okay. Luckily, the slow poke are not slow like they normally are. These things normally take forever. We have no healing items. Okay, well, we'll teach rest now. So this is a trick. Um, you can just teach rest early on into the run with most electric types and it's totally safe. That never, um, I never really realized that in the past. Yeah, I wanted to try and get the paralysis there before healing. I'm healing now because self-destructing hiker is coming up next. So I'd rather get the health here then have to do it right away during the fight against him. That doesn't make a lot of sense. When his Pokemon can self-destruct and I have a low defense stat. Okay, there are two strategies here. Either just spam rest and pray, or use sand attack and pray. Obviously, sand attack when the health is green is the best play. <laughs> ah, no! Are you kidding me?! Ah, and then it removed my repel because I reset and I get... Ah, oh, gosh! Ah. I hate you, dude. Blow up! Come on! Come on! Don't make me do this. Oh, it's, like, I can't even buy time here efficiently. Okay, there we go. Finally. Okay, well... Guess we just heal and hope it blows up. Come on. Come on! Yes. <gasps> All right, we did it. This was ridiculous, though. Judo crit, because uh, it has low crit rate, so kind of ridiculous that it crit. And then the first step I took, I got an encounter. <laughs> There's a lot of bad luck right there. <laughs> All right. We are through that portion of the game to what I consider to be the mid-game. Is it worth it to level up to 30 for this? Uh, maybe. It might be. We'll, we'll see when we optimize. Because if I can use... I don't think I can use my rare candies, which is like a... That's a problem. Because um, Jolteon, I'm going to need like 68 or 70 to win the to beat the game. I'm trying 68 this time. That's going to be my goal level. But like 68 is a lot. That's a lot of leveling. Um, 
And I don't know if I want to burn rare candies early on just to get two more levels there. And then training in the early game is just not nearly as efficient as, as it would be later into the game. So I, I don't know. I, I think that honestly, I think he's not really a problem. I just got really lucky. Like that's like the one loss condition is one of these Pokemon crit. Um, so some electric types will rely on double edge, but not this electric type. Randroth. I hope you're having a good day too. I'm going to do this because I want to get vitamins and I want to get protein real bad. I want as much damage as is possible. Okay, so now we get rid of sand attack for double kick. Oops. Uh, I'm going to get the other, the other items. They'll give me one more vitamin. They do take quite a bit longer, but like maybe 20 more seconds. Okay. Almost got trapped there by another Pokemon's plan. Uh... We're gonna need 11 super repels. We already have our Pidgey. Notably in this game, tri attack has no secondary effect, but Jolteon can't even learn it because it's an electric type. First time caller, long time listener. Well, thanks for stopping by and checking out the stream. Darn. Well, I can only get four. It'll have to be enough. Now, iron is the other play, but I don't think I need iron. Oh, wait. I will need something else, though. I'm playing all right today. Yeah, HP up is, is useless. Better to have a different vitamin. One more HP stat is, is not helpful. It, it, it helps a lot less than um, like one more, for instance, uh, uh, iron. It'll, it'll do a lot, like one more iron will do a lot more for your Pokemon's survivability than one HP up. Like, I won't even pick up the HP up in this floor, or in this building. It's just like, it's a waste of time, I think. There's there's a few rare circumstances where you're trying to squeeze by and just barely live certain hits where those are useful. It's like, at level... Uh, can't spoil the video. <laughs> there are some circumstances. There are some circumstances where you have to... Do everything in your power to survive certain hits. And like if you're living on like 2 HP every time, it's enough. Like, And so then like the extra HP and the extra like one more iron will be the thing that makes the difference for you. <laughs> ditto in shambles, yeah. Well, ditto, it's good. Uh, let's just fight. So before doing other gym leaders and stuff, I like to go to Cycling Road just to get experience rather than trying to fight like Erica at a lower level. 
Then you get wrecked because you really shouldn't be doing this too early. So we're going to do a decent amount of training in the mid game. Don't understand the difficulty of the run. Eventually you just level and obliterate everything. Yeah, but if you have a timer and you're trying to do it as fast as possible, that's the difficulty. The difficulty is not winning or not winning. It's not a binary. Like, it, it is not... I do. I agree. It, it is not... The, like, asking the question, like, can I beat this game with this Pokemon is not inherently interesting. Uh, and I'm not answer, asking that question. I'm trying to see how fast can I do it? Is it possible to do it under 50 minutes when playing on four times game speed? So we're gonna fight a decent number of Pokemon here. Honestly, like I think I would have not been enjoying this channel uh, and making this type of content if I had not put the timer in my videos. The timer is like so, it like really refreshes everything. Because you're constantly trying to balance out all these metrics and go like, okay, how do I get the po lowest possible resets and getting the lowest possible re real time and getting the lowest possible uh, game time? Like, how do we min max for everything to just get this like perfectly balanced run where it feels like the Pokemon just dominates? Uh, that That is very, very intriguing and a much more complicated question to answer. Uh, Pin Missile, I'm going to say no to because I learned Rest. I think ideally if you don't learn Rest before the Hiker or you have enough healing items, th then I think... Oh yeah, you cut this tree, by the way. I, I haven't remembered it yet, but uh, this tree is more efficient. It's 30 steps going the other way and it's 20... I think 22 or 23 the way that I just went. It's like 30% faster. Are you kidding me? Fine. I don't need the carbos, so I'm really fast. But I do need the protein that's over here. And one, I, picking up only one vitamin in the safari zone is the ideal circumstance, which I'll touch on in just one tiny second after I pick up uh, Surf. So Surf is at the bottom of my bag and I have Squirtle, so of course I'm gonna teach it. And then right above it is the protein. And then when I use it, I reset to the top of the inventory. So the next time I access the inventory, it's really uh, convenient for me to just grab whatever uh, item I want. Sand Slash is the ultimate problem for electric types. The ele Executor is not, not an issue. The Executor is slow, but it, it's not like a problem in the same way. Whereas like Sand Slash is like, I will two hit you with Earthquake, and I am always going to use Earthquake. And then you just, you just sad. Like that's really how it feels. How high do you think you could set the speed multiplier and still be able to play? Um, I think five or six times I could still play pretty well. Uh, it would be hard. I think it would be hard. I could probably get used to it. I, I don't know. I think probably by like eight times I, I, I won't be able to play efficiently. I'll get really tense too. Because like when you're trying to make a very precise maneuver, uh, the bodily tension increases. Because you're like trying to be very precise with your motions and control everything. So, uh, and then tension is obviously bad for like the musculature and stuff long term. You get like RSI and stuff like that if you're really tense. So, Magneton's not a steel type, so double kick's not super effective, obviously. And yes, Executor is four times weak to pin missile, but it doesn't matter. We, we don't want to fight the Executor, or we don't want to keep pin missile because it's not a good move. It's going to miss. Like, you're going to try and attack, and it's just going to miss. 85% accuracy. More like 0% accuracy when you need it. Do, do, do. Okay, that's the last protein. Skip takedown, obviously. Fight the Hypno Sandwich. This guy. He's good. But when you crit, you're fine.
Bon. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna be level 40 now. I think I can fight the rival at level 40. Again, the Sand Slash is the one I'm worried about. In this case, the Sand Slash is not as intimidating as it is in the champion fight. It knows no ground type moves. The problem is I it has high defense and I have to hit it with body slam and double kick. Not ideal, and it also knows sand attack. So it can really mess you up if it just spams sand attack while you're trying to knock it out with body slam. Um, this has got to be one of the most frustrating fights to play around when using an electric type. Because after you knock out the sand slash, things are much easier. Like they're not that problematic. So hopefully we just like turn one crit, paralyze, it doesn't move, and then we knock it out. That's what I want. Come on, let's go. Nope. Okay, we got poisoned. Um, I can heal it with, uh, yeah, okay. I'll probably heal it on the Magneton. The Magneton's kind of trash when you're using an electric type. It can confuse you, but like, whatever. It's not the worst. Um, I'm gonna heal. Oh no. Okay, whew. Magneton's slowing me down, but it's not the end of the world. I'm way faster than the Kadabra and then the Flareon. Uh, obviously no Thunder Wave. Flareon will be a two hit. It has really good special. Even some of my critical hit ranges do not KO. So I just picked up a bunch of healing items. So I don't have to go back to the healing room. Y you usually only want to go there once. If, you, if you're going there twice, you're playing a first stage Pokemon that's bad. Or you've misplayed in some way, or like, had you've been really unlucky and had to use all your healing items earlier into the run. But like, I don't know, that's pretty impossible around this area, because you pick up all the healing items right before you fight the rival. Okay, Giovanni. This fight can be rough for some electric types, but with double kick, I have super effective damage on the Rhyhorn. Um, so yeah, it's not a problem. Uh, come on. And then Body Slam is enough for the Neo Queen. Okay, Sylph is done. What's my level? Or what's my speed? My speed is 140. Okay, I was going to say when I teleport out of here, I'll go to Saffron City and fight Sabrina, but I don't actually... Uh, my waypoint was set to Celadon, so I'll just fight Erica instead. Then when I fly away from, uh, from here, I will go to... Uh, Sabrina's gym next. If you can, you want to like stay in the same city as long as possible and never backtrack there so that you minimize the number of times you're flying from locations. But it doesn't make sense to go to Celadon City and then fly to Saffron City and then face Sabrina and then fly back to Celadon City. Like, it just makes more sense to fight Erica now. Wow. <laughs> really? Kind of annoying. So, like, Pin Missile would help here. Because it'll do four times damage, but... Again, her team's not very good against an electric type, so we're fine. Uh, I am gonna heal this time. Now, there are a couple trainers in Sabrina's gym that are pretty quick to knock out. And yeah, the reason I was saying, uh, someone mentioned it in chat, I think it was Annie. Uh, the reason I was mentioning Sabrina is because I already outspeed all of her team. Why would I, uh, why would I put off fighting her when I'm already outspeeding? So I might as well just come in here and, and take care of her now. And I, I don't need the special, the special boost because my special is already very high. I'm going to fight the people that I know I can knock out very quickly. Do I learn teleport? I don't learn teleport. Okay, Sabrina. Should be fine. The more times I get to attack when it uses recover, the more likely I'm to paralyze it like I did there. So it buying time is not necessarily a disadvantage for me. Okay, now we face Koga.
Uh, body slam on these. Oh, actually, interestingly enough, Body Slam and Thunderbolt one hit all of these Pokemon. That's cool. I'll fight this guy without saving. If he gets me, um, I'll just be very sad. He can because Sand Slash uses Sand Attack and then crits with Slash a lot. It's possible. See, like that. But if if you don't get stuck against the Sand Slash, you're usually fine. And I haven't used my Paralyze Heal from the beginning of the game yet, so I can just take take care of that now. I might want to fight that guy, the second Tamer. Technically, he's coded as Tamer 1 in the ROM, but... Uh, I'm going to say no to Agility. I do not think it is useful for Jolteon. But... Could be wrong about that. It feels it always feels weird in Gen 1 pa passing up a badge-boosting move. Like, this should just be a series of 1 hits and then a 2 hit on the Venomoth. 81.5% chance to 2 hit the Venomoth. To be very surprised if I don't get it. <laughs> I got a crit in one hit. All right. That was a 10.4% chance, so lucky. This ordering is good, too, because I can do Warden right after Koga. And like I said, we're not going to use Toxic in this run, so we're going to toss it. That may make me get stuck later later on if I have not calculated things well enough, but hopefully, hopefully not. This Fisher is incredible experience. He is, I think, the best experience yield trainer in the entire game. He just comes at a kind of unfortunate moment. He's as good as the guy with the five team on Cycling Road. Three coughing, two wheezing. He's as good as that guy, but he only has four Pokemon, so you knock him out faster. And like, the Seeking and Golding are really not good against anything. There is an Iron over here, which I'll get. I'll skip the Carbos on the next floor, because I don't need speed. I'm already faster than the fastest Pokemon that I will fight, which is the Aerodactyl with 170 speed. Now I am going to get the power plant candy in this run. We will want to cut it as soon as possible. That's the first thing that we would do. Uh, but I'll fight Blaine first. Because I am I want to go through everything essentially without candies until Giovanni. Uh, yes. No, no, no. Yes, no. The answers to these questions. The middle row is all no's. That's how you know it. And then the start of both of the other ones are yeses. The very last question is no. Alright, uh, Blaine, you can run Reflect in this fight if you're scared about him using physical moves, because they hit pretty hard, like you just saw there with the takedown, but... You can get unlucky and lose this one, but Jolteon's fine today. Pretty good performance. We are slow to get a sub 50 minute time in this run, but we should expect that with how badly Nugget Bridge went. Uh, that said, I don't think we're quite making the pace that I want to make. So either I've done too much training or something else is off that we'll have to fix after the fact. But I think that we're going to set a very good time compar comparatively to my former one hour and one minute and ten seconds. That was... That's just... That time's going to be completely made irrelevant by this. Yeah, Jolteon's so good until the champion. It's really true. Jolteon is excellent. A lot of electric types feel great in this game until you get to the champion. Or whenever you face the rival and his sand true and sand slash are just sitting there like, Hello. <laughs> like... <laughs> Do you remember us? We hate electric types. We are here to make sure that you box your Pikachu and listen to its sad cry when you put it in. It's like, Pika! And you're like, oh no. As a child, it broke my heart. I could never do it. Okay. Uh, that's an unfortunate amount of experience. <laughs> Let's fight this guy. Just get a little bit more to get to level 50 before I use candies. 
please. Okay, general miss on Thunderbolt. Not great. Okay, level 50. You can't fight this cool trainer here or this other guy because he has ground types. I don't want to fight ground types if we can avoid them. That hyper potion that I got before, useful now. Rare candies, let's go. Uh, one, two. What's that, thunder? No. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Why do I have a carbos in my inventory? Now I'm going to delete double kick. You're like, weird. Before the ride on? Yes, before the ride on. <laughs> I need rest for the champion. I have to have it. I have to have Mimic for this fight. And I need Thunderbolt, obviously. Hopefully that's obvious. I also have to use double team here. It's the only way to get through this fight. I guess, well, the other option is getting paralyzed and then digging, mimicking dig. And then you go underground with dig and it's like absurd things happen because you can't get hit if you get paralyzed when you're underground. Really funny, but... Uh... Not what I want to use. It's much less consistent than this strategy. Um, okay, we're going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. <laughs> Last hit. Oh, gosh. Pain. The pain. The fact the Persian hit me with the screech was uh, what got me. That gets me again. Okay. Not great, but... We just gotta hope that he doesn't hit us. Also, I should be using Thunderbolt on the Persian and then double uh, a Body Slam on everything else, but it doesn't really matter. Like, I just need the Rhydon to not actually attack me. If it hits, I'm gonna lose. Yeah. Rhydon is devastating. Yeah, if you think double team makes this fight too easy, it certainly um, it makes this fight possible. I don't know if too easy is exactly how I would describe it. Because you can just lose like that, setting up against the Persian. You obviously don't want to set up against any of the other three Pokemon because they have Earthquake. The Doug Trio has Earthquake as well, and Dig, and it can hit you like that for half. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we're fine. I'm not going to heal because if they attack me, I lose. Wait, I didn't get hit by Screech. Maybe I will heal. I'm going to heal here because I didn't get hit by Screech. If it hits me with Screech while I'm waking up, then uh, so be it. I will just waste time then. But I, I'll, because like whenever you use double team, it badge boosts you. So you can see my defense stat is quite high now. I think I will survive a hit from the ride on when it gets one. So long as I haven't been hit by er uh, Screech earlier in the fight. Okay, we did it. Uh, quite bad Giovanni split. Overall, the RNG in this run is quite bad. I might play a Nugget Bridge. Whew. Did some risky decisions there and it didn't pay off. Okay, so we're level 61. I think we're our level is too low. We need to train more. I don't know how Ike did this, honestly. This is like wild. Level 68 in like 48 minutes. I guess if you take out all the reset time and put that towards, like, training or something, it's more possible. Slash is better than Body Slam, unless Body Slam crits. But Slash is just more reliable against stuff like the Execute. And the, the Magneton. Yeah, I'll just give you this. We'll do some training in Victory Road. Well, I get one more rare candy, so that'll take me to like from here, kind of to 64. If I fight the person at the beginning. No, we should be good. We should. We're on track for 68 finish. Yeah, that was the big thing that I brought to these runs last year: is the idea of fighting the perfect trainers. Um, it really is helpful to know exactly which trainer has better experience yields than others and then prioritize fighting them rather than just being like, I need to train. Well, let's just beat everyone on Cycling Road. That's not very, very good. I underestimated the impact that 
training inefficiently would have on runs prior to maybe September, August 2023. Okay. There is also the possibility of beating Giovanni at a lower level, just with double team and, and relying on that exclusively. Uh, this guy's experience are, is, is okay, but I'm um, not going to fight him. I'll fight this guy. He's got a water type. Oh, Giovanni would be a great dark type trainer. I like that idea a lot. I don't know if I should fight this person. I'm gonna fight her. By the way, Thunderbolt is the best move against the... Oh no. It's okay. It has really low speed, so it's not gonna crit very much. Well, apparently it's gonna crit a lot and I'm asleep forever. Oh, I hate that. Well, we have to finish this run. We need data. So, unfortunately, we have to do this. A uh, Parasect person was not a good person to to uh, fight, apparently. Holy. <laughs> that is a devastating reset. That loses like five minutes. Or now reset, blackout. Thanks, Peter. If we still clock in with a PB, even though this is how bad the run has been, I'm gonna be, that's gonna be, it's gonna really show us what happens when you try to shoot for ultimate consistency, or you just try and play a little bit riskier, but get through the game at a lower level. Or with a, also with a riskier strat. I think I will fight this guy. I regret my decision after last time. I think this guy, you, you fight him instead of the mm, Parasect person. Yeah, I lost repels too, I know. That's why it's not good. I knew that I, I should be scared of him or her because of the Parasect. The Chansey and the Dugong were not gonna be an issue. But I just figured the Parasect was not that good. It's never uh, given me issues before. So we're over 50 minutes now. It's okay, we gotta come back and do this one again, of course. Yeah, the, the cool trainer at the beginning is also a good experience. I wanna fight this guy. That'll, this'll be my last trainer before the league. And then we hope that the final rare candy will get us to 68 for the champion over the damage rounding threshold so that I can hopefully take care of the sand slash. Uh, and if I can't, we're just going to be really sad. Because there is, I think there's only one way to win with my current strat. If I can't, yeah, if, if 68 is not enough, but I, 68 is going to be enough. We might be able to even drop it down to 65. We'll have to look at ranges and stuff. Fight the Parasect again for revenge? No. <laughs> no, I refuse. <laughs> okay, Lorelei. Um, Thunderbolt. It's real good. Just saying. Uh... Loss conditions here. I guess the Jinx can lovely kiss me because I can't one hit it. By the way, Body Slam and Thunderbolt have the exact same chance to KO. I think I should use Body Slam for the higher chance to paralyze there. 
Uh, Mimic Dig here against the uh, the Onyxes, so you can actually attack them with super effective damage. It's still not great because they have uh, they have their own dig, which can kind of mess up the turn ordering and sometimes hit you for super effective damage. But also the uh, X Defense, which I just let him get one for free there. Thanks, misclick. Okay, well, that's that. Very simple. This makes me even more sad about Jolteon and the electric type. Look at how good it is. Just crushing so far. Okay, Agatha. Um, what are my ranges here? Okay. I do not have good ranges, so I am going to set up the substitute. Substitute is not required. Well, substitute is not required if I crit like a machine. I don't expect that I'm going to crit like a machine. Okay, we're see, we're going to get level 68, but we're going to have slightly too much experience because we're going to go over level 67 in the Lance fight. And I don't want to go over the level, so we can cut at least one trainer from Victory Road. Go into the league partway through a level, then get to exactly 68 by the end of the Lance fight. That'll be much more optimal. The PNPTSD stats for Parasect. Yeah, it does now. Uh, this thing won't use any of its electric moves because I'm an electric type, so I can just spam Thunderbolt and knock it out. By the way, Body Slam will not knock it out faster. Uh, hilariously, I only have two uses of Ice Beam. I should use Ice Beam here and then uh, Thunderbolt on the Aerodactyl and then Ice Beam on the Dragonite. That's definitely the correct choice. See, the Dragonite experience is all going to go to waste. Look at that. I got like a third and it's just not going to be useful. Now it's gone. Okay, we need Reflect. You have to have Reflect. The Thunderbolt basic, uh, sorry, the champion moveset has to be Thunderbolt, Rest, Reflect, or bo and Body Slam. Or you have to use Toxic in the place of Body Slam. Both are bad choices, but uh, this is the least bad that I can think of with my current knowledge. So let's see. Come on. Come on! That's not what I need. Okay, now we try again. <laughs> and we basically hope we get through the entire playthrough as fast as possible so that we can just roll the dice here several times and lock out. Come on. Yeah, that's what I need. Come on now. Yes. Yes! Ha ha ha! Let's go! Woo! Yeah. Come on. All right. Yeah, badge boost me. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. All right, well, much better time than my... Oh, no, 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 no. Fire spin is very bad because of leech seed. Okay, we're good. Ta-da! 56-14. Seven resets at level 69. This was a much nicer playthrough than my previous result. One hour and one minute and ten seconds. Roughly five minutes, just a little under five minutes faster than that run. Uh, which I did a year and a half ago now. Uh, final game time, three hours and 26 minutes. In comparison with the previous playthrough I did, which was three hours and 59 minutes. You can see that I was able to dramatically reduce uh, my game time. 3 hours and 26 minutes, just so everyone's aware. Uh, another Pokemon that has a similar result to that right now is Gyarados with 54 minutes and 5 seconds. Um, or perhaps, uh, oh, I can't say that result yet. Eh, Weezing with 3 hours and 29 minutes. Uh, its real time was 53 minutes and 15 seconds. So we're looking like we're in like under 55 minutes, but not yet under 50 minutes in terms of uh, game time. So we need to try and optimize things just a little bit better to squeeze out some more uh, game time if possible to get us lower. You can also do the calculation, which I don't really like doing. I, it's too approximate for me, but you can do the like the perfect playthrough time, which is you take um, three times 60 for the hours and then you add the minutes, 26. So it's 206 minutes of game time in total you divide it by four and that gives you like basically the um 
the minimum possible real time if you play perfectly. Uh, but, and in this case, it would be 51 minutes and 30 seconds. So again, uh, we need to push lower. We need to go to like, I think it's like, uh, probably three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, something like that in terms of game time. So we need to get like un, like maybe 10 minutes of game time out. Would the TP to sell it on instead of saffron matter for saving time? Uh, it's not gonna save that much time, I don't think. Like one way we're gonna save a lot of time is we get rid of the trip to the power plant. Like the power plant is burning so much time. That's 40 seconds of, of real time. That's like two and a half minutes of game time. So that's like a, there's a, that's a big save, but, but to do that, we also have to get rid of a bunch of trainers. So we may not want to get rid of a bunch of trainers, uh, cause it may not be beneficial to remove trainers. <laughs> the resets were all over the place. I also had four blackouts, uh, three of them to the light years junior trainer, but one of them was unintentional. Also, oh, that's also worth noting. Um, yeah. The game time here is inflated because I had that major blackout. Remember, when you blackout, the time continues incrementing in the game time, whereas when you reset, it resets the game time to the previously saved value. As a result, whenever you take blackouts, your game time increases uh, while your real time is increasing, plus you get to keep the experience. So there's like blackouts and resets uh, function very differently in these runs. Okay, so this is my third run with Jolteon, and then we'll put the a pen to it with Refined, and then we're gonna try and go through and just refine this a little bit. So, uh, unfortunately with the champion, the news is worse than I was expecting. What I was hoping for is Body Slam when it crits to do 66% damage, and then be able to finish off with one non-crit Body Slam, but that is not possible. So right now what we either need to do is we need to crit twice in a row, which is, that's not that impossible for Jolteon. Like what, it's like 12.5% chance? 25% multiplied together twice? It's like 12.5%. That's not bad. Um, but uh, you can also, while trying that to get the two crits in a row, you can also get crit into paralyze into knockout. Um, or you can get paralyze into sand slash never moves into knockout. Also, the sand slash does not need, like the sand slash does not need to never hit you because you're setting up reflect on the first turn. So you have the ability to survive some of its hits. In this case, uh, we don't have a reflect thing yet in the over uh, in the software uh, auto auto add a reflect thing. Anyways, I'm just gonna set up two defense curls because it basically doubles my defense. That's what Reflect does. It halves physical damage in the damage calculation. I just wanna see how much, so Earthquake's doing 32 to 38% damage right now. So roughly one third, which means it's never gonna two hit me. I can set up Reflect before, take one third, and then I get two more chances to attack uh, and roll the dice for good luck against the champion. And I get that every fight, and if I reset, I reset very quickly. Because I'll know, after the second body slam and the outcome of that turn, I know if I reset or not. If I don't get the paralysis, I just reset right away. Like, no use wasting the time. Uh, that does affect the badge boost, but badge boost is only affected offensively. So if you look here, um, his damage ranges, like, the, the badge boost is going to be calculated correctly when... Um, when using uh, defense curl. Yeah. Having two 25% chance occurrences in a row is a uh, 1 16th chance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have misheard you thinking it was hard. Yeah, yeah, correct. You, di I, you didn't mishear me. I just said it wrong. I was just doing the wrong math. Yeah, you're right. It's a 6.25% chance. But that, that chance is increased. That chance is increased. Um, by the paralysis chance. Uh, I think what we got to ask the question here is, like, if we go in at a lower level, let's say we go in at 67, we remove one rare candy. 
How badly does this damage range get impacted? We lose 5% chance. Or like a... We go from 58% to 53% on the crit body slam. But we... Our body slam at 67 still has a... 3 hit on the Jolteon with a regular hit. That's pretty good. Because if we get paralysis and we prevent it from moving, we'll knock it out. I joined a long time ago and watching Scott since Voltorb. That is an old video. That's like my sixth video or something like that. It's very old. Although I do have fond memories of that video. I was on vacation when I was recording that. So I was outside on my laptop filming uh, Voltorb footage while my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, was chatting with my parents and socializing and I'm like inside like gotta make this Pokemon video for like five people to watch because I had like 25 subscribers yeah I got, got fond memories of that video I got so stuck at Giovanni I had to level up so much absolutely it was like level 96 or something I beat him at ridiculous um we can also look and see what happens if we like the use vitamins here so like let's take away the protein from the department store and see how that impacts the damage range against the champion so now we drop, that drops us, okay, the protein saves us 2%. Like, they, it gives us 2%. Whereas if we add the rare candy in and go in at level 68, now, now we gain 1%. Guaranteed 3 hit with a body slam, basically. Not really a chance to 2 hit. It's very low, 1.1% to 2 hit. Is it possible to gain an extra level or two by using less rare candies before Giovanni? Yeah, let's see what happens at 70. Okay, at 70 with no protein, we have a 5% chance to two hit the Sand Slash. What about with protein? With four protein, we have a 6.8% chance. You see how little the vitamins impact this stuff? <laughs> whenever whenever someone is just like, get the vitamin, it's useful. I'm like, no, it's not. It's like 20 seconds of like picking the item up, opening the inventory, finding the item in the inventory, using the item correctly on your lead Pokemon rather than your HM user Pidgey, which happens way more than I like to admit. Um, then you close the inventory and all of that. And you're like, yes, 1% higher chance to knock out the Sand Slash. Um, that doesn't feel good. Sometimes it makes a bigger difference, like 3 or 4%, and then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this really makes sense. Like, I should definitely be doing this. But in this case, it, it might not, it might make more sense to use iron. Like, let's see what, what happens to its ranges. It was like 32 to 38% before, after the two defense curls. Now it's 29 to 34%. So, um, that's a lot better. I think we iron. Yeah, speed speed is the most impactful stat. If you buy vitamins and you get the outspeed on a critical foe, like, 100% you should do it. Like, because speed is binary. It goes, well, it's ternary, actually. It goes from you never move first to you have a 50% chance to move first to you always move first. Flipping from never moving first to always moving first changes the fight fundamentally. Um, so many fights play completely different when you just move first. It's the difference between taking two attacks before attacking after one move of setup versus just setting up, taking one attack, and then attacking. It's like, so different. What about double edge or take? No, don't suggest those. Bad no. <laughs> we'll try it. I will humor you, but, but no, it, it's not going to work. Like we, people have already like um, what's his name? Uh, Ike has Ike, Ike has gone through and and looked at these moves and like we've done a lot of 
brainstorming around like what is possible in this fight. And I don't think the takedown or double edge is going to do it. So like double edge raises our chance to two hit to 41%, but you have to remember I'm going to take recoil damage when I hit. So the sand slash... Let's see, how much health does the sand slash have? If, if double edge is the option, I'll, I'll eat my words totally. So double edge deals one quarter recoil damage. Okay, so 53 in total for the sand slash. Fifty-three in total. I'm gonna hit it twice. But if I let's say I hit it once. That's forty one to forty eight percent. So in worst case scenario, forty eight percent of that is twenty five damage. I'm gonna take twenty five points of recoil. So one seventy two what did I say, 25? Yeah, 25. 172 minus 25 is 147. And the Earthquakes are each dealing, let's say, 72, maximum damage range. So two Earthquakes are not going to knock me out, but I'll be left with three hit points. In the best case scenario, I will have 22 more hit points than that, which is exactly 25, and then I'll KO myself. Oh yeah, um, uh, Juan Jones, I guess, yeah, it is Black History Month. Uh, notably, we do not have Black History Month in Canada, so uh, that is why I did not shout it out. But uh, definitely something that would be good to shout out. Um... Yeah, double edge is just like it's like Okay, so double edge is not going to do it. Hyperbeam is going to take way too long cuz you can't buy the TM. The TM just takes too long to buy. It takes like 5 minutes of time, real time to buy it. Like 20 minutes of game time. It's ridiculous. I don't I don't think it's uh, like observed in Canada. Uh I don't know. I, I looked it up. Like we like I've I've heard. It's not like I haven't heard of it before. And like some like I've definitely. Oh yeah, no, it is. It is. It has official recognition in Canada. So I'm wrong. I've definitely seen stuff for it here in Canada. I don't know. Maybe it's a bigger deal in the states. Uh, I'm not sure. Also, to be fair. My province in Canada is uh, not the most diverse place. So uh, that is definitely the lens it, through which I uh, unfortunately have been uh, like grown up and, and uh, educated. Anyways, yeah, hope well, you're having a good Black History Month. Yeah, I'm I'm in Alberta. Um, the Canadian Texas. So, okay, back to the run, double edge. Ah. Uh. Alberta is very white, yeah. Um, okay, so like, I I still think Body Slam is the play because the paralysis chance and double edge makes things less consistent because you take recoil damage. Um, level 70 is not, let's take off the rare candies and let's try, let's see what that does. I still have a three hit with body slam. The problem is like, okay, so crits in gen one are not two times damage. 
and crits in Gen 1 are also, they bypass the intended badge boost. Um, which is like, not great for my overall damage. Um, yeah. Hey, Exceptional, how's it going, man? It's good to see you here. We gotta do a stream together sometime. Teach me Fire Red. Show me your ways. I must get better at this game. Hopefully you didn't watch my Beedrill video. It's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, also, uh, also embarrassing being unaware of Black History Month and the fact that your country does officially observe it. You know the reason? I searched it on Google because I'm like, is there a reason that I am completely unaware of this? And then I just said, observed in the States. And I was like, oh, we probably don't observe it here. And then I, I said something dumb. <sighs> well, sometimes I make mistakes in game. Sometimes I make mistakes out of game. I am a fallible human. Apologies. Yeah. The calculations are frustratingly close to being good. Yeah, exactly. But then like, okay, so like, watch this. We go to level 73 and it's just like, wow, it's much better now. <laughs> like the sand slash is never going to knock us out. Uh, in in three hits with Earthquake. We're going to survive all of them. And then, um, oh, I forgot. Actually, I have badge boosts on when I'm looking at my damage ranges, but I'll three hit. So we have to take those rare candies off and then we have to check the damage ranges again. In this case, I have a 56% chance to three hit. That's pretty good. And then there's Paralysis adding to the help uh, the help that is just like going to get Jolteon there. It's ridiculous crit rate. Um, I guess the Sand Slash could Gen 1 miss an Earthquake. That said, um, uh, I don't think that's ever happened when I want it to happen. That would be amazing though. Um, <sighs> hey, Escape Camper. Thanks for posting... I see that you've turned what I said in one of my videos into a meme and are posting out on all of my videos. <laughs> uh, imagine manu manually running the game over and over for hours on end just to see if a rare candy makes a difference. You know, I used to do it like that. Then I figured out I can just hack the rare candies in, so then I did that to test. And then after that, see, there's the, there's the statement. Yeah, you must have that pasted in like a notepad document or something. Good job. Um, but yeah, like I used to do it the old fashioned way of like actually like test everything, but it's much better to just have a software that calculates everything for you. And you can just look at the damage ranges and go like, this isn't going to work or, oh wow, this is much better than I thought it was. I had like a 1% chance to lose here, but, ah, uh, Jolteon, it's like, it's just a little disappointing. If Body Slam could just do, if it could have like five more base attack, I bet I could invest in protein and get a much better chance here. But I just don't. Maybe protein is the right choice. I'm like, I'm going back on that. I'm going to try this again with these damage ranges. What does that do to us? Level 68. Nah, oh, it's like nothing. It's like 2%. Again. Just terrible. Gosh. Okay, so I think that, uh, like, for this, the champion, I, I don't know if we're going to necessarily... We can't save time to get to the champion at a lower level. That just doesn't make sense. But we can save time protein with... It kills me. Protein KOs me. I'm pretty sure it KOs me. Let's check again. We're going to check again. I'm not sure. Let's check. Level 68, double edge, with protein. 97% chance to 3 hit. Doing between 32 and 38% damage per turn. If we deal the maximum damage, which is 38... And the Sand Slash's health is what? 172? 172. 
172 times 0.38 rounds down to so 65. 65 damage divided by 4 is 16 in recoil times 2 because I will hit it twice before it attacks. That's 32 damage on my 206 health. I have 174 left over and each earthquake is going to be doing roughly 78 damage. I'll survive. I'll survive two hits. And then the third one will not KO me. Hmm. I don't know. This is this is tricky. I think I think it's like it's really close. The thing that's making me lean now towards body slam is the fact that the Alakazam is next. And I don't want to use double edge on the Alakazam. Because I'll lose like I'll knock myself out against the Alakazam. Or then I have to rest on the Alakazam, giving it time to like lower my special with psychic or hit me with Kinesis. In which case, um, yeah, the rest of the fight's going to be so painful. I think I'd rather just reset to the Sand Slash a couple more times and then make it by eventually. Um. Uh. I'm going to remove this comment. <laughs> Having minus one, dude. Yeah, we're just going to... I'm going to remove the comment right now. Uh, I believe the comment was uh, distasteful, as Annie said. Um, but I will not remove you from chat. Because it has only happened once. Uh, and perhaps there was... I'm. I'm going to... Because I am an eternal optimist, I am going to assume some form of uh, lack of awareness of the situation. Uh, and I would encourage you to uh, look up why Game Freak intentionally changed the coloration of Jinx in the yellow back ports. Do a little bit of investigating. I think that uh, I think that it will be maybe informative. Uh, I think, like, okay, I don't know what to change against the champion. Let's try and remove trainers in Victory Road to see if we can get, like, one less trainer, but also... Like, I can take out the Tamer for sure, probably, right? Let's turn off switching here. Don't switch. Okay, we get rid of the tamer, and then you guys can't see. Just a second. I'm gonna lower this room. Just gonna make the window a little bit smaller. By the way, we we are aware of uh, how bad this software performs in terms of like UI and stuff like that. Uh, Auto is Auto is working on it. But there's a, there's a lot of other things to get done, so it's probably going to be a, a, a quite some time before we, we fix the UI. Come on. Resize, please. Thank you. Okay. So...
If we do that, now we are level... We level up after the champion. Okay. So that removes one tamer. What if we get rid of... Wait, the tamer is bad experience. Let's get rid of like the cool trainer too and see if that messes everything up. Yeah, it messes everything up. Okay, so don't do that. So we just don't fight the tamer. No, no, no. Don't fight the tamer. Fight the cool trainer. Lance. That is... Tamer. That cool trainer. That cool trainer. The first two cool trainers in the in Victory Road. Then the guy with the other cool trainer with three water types. Software misspelled hiker's room. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good, good point. Don't know what's going on there. We gotta fix that. Um... Uh, Victory Bell, any Pokemon, any Gen 2 Pokemon that could beat Victory Bell in yellow? I don't think so. I don't think anything was, like, introduced with the unique blend of awesomeness that Victory Bell has in Generation 1. Like, sleep moves plus medium slow growth rate's really good. I, I don't know how to tell you that. It's so good. Like, really good. Okay, um, I don't know. I kind of want to just do this one again, like... I don't really know what I can improve, other than maybe we move the rare candies. Like, what if we do... All right, what if we're like 58 for Giovanni and we save like... So we, we go up to 58, that's eight rare candies in total. Like, can I then use the remaining rare candies right before the champion to get some dramatic improvement? It's so like, let's see if I take out... Okay, so that I can take out a trainer there. I get the 64 after Lance. And then for the champion, I am going 65. That's one rare candy. How many rare candies do I have in my bag? Ooh, I can get to 69 by doing that. Nice. But... That might be what we need to get rid of the power plant candy. Or we get rid of a bunch of trainers and then we do the power plant candy. Huh. take out okay what's going to be faster taking out the trainers or taking out the power plant work candy power plant's like 40 seconds and i get one level but like if i take out the trainers trainers take longer than 40 seconds i don't know if that's true that's like that is that seems like that feels correct but but i don't know if that is actually correct It's probably true that the trainers take more time. So like what I should do is remove the trainers. Like let's 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 remove the trainers and see how it goes. Like in Sabrina's gym, I can take out the two psychics cuz I don't need to do the they're not great experience, so like in general if I can get rid of them, I I want to. That gets me to level up. Oh, I can take out this extra trainer that I did in Viridian City gym. Can I take out this tamer? I would like to not fight this tamer if possible. No, I can't. Then I don't get the level I want. But do I still get to the end of the game with the right? No, no, I don't. Okay, so we don't do that. Wait, wait, wait. 
This is not enough for candies. I have this number. No, I don't. I have four. I have four. Yeah, there's 12 in total. Yeah, so I lose a level if I do that. So we have to fight the tamer here. Or what if we fight the psychic, one of the psychics instead of the tamer? The guy with three. Does that give me what I need? It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. No. Now I'm 67 for Lance. What is happening? So these three trainers give me an extra level before Giovanni, and then I go to 58 here for Giovanni. Then I get to 64, and then... Ah, uh, honestly... That just kind of works. So this is basically the same route that I played last time. Let's remember who I fought in Sylph. Machoke guy, four trainer, next four trainer, five trainer, four trainer, Arbok guy, Hypno Sandwich, Electrode, then the guy to the healing room, then the Hypno Rocket, then the rival. Okay. And then I take that Tamer out of Victory Road and the Cool Trainer. Which one is this? Oh yeah, that guy. So we take out the Tamer, we fight the Cool Trainer at the entrance, and then we fight the Cool Trainer with the Water Type line, and then that levels us up enough. Then we have four rare candies that we can use to go from 64 to 68, which gives us the damage ranges that we hopefully need to beat the champion in a relatively low amount of time. Okay, I think this is a better plan. So 58 for Giovanni with eight rare candy. So we want to be level 50 right before Giovanni to get there. And then if we do that, we make it through the rest of the game fighting only two trainers in Victory Road. So I eliminate two trainers. I eliminate two trainers, I maintain the same level, and we're gonna have significantly less mess ups. This is good enough, let's try. Whew, I'm ready to get back in the game. Yeah, Celebi is medium slow growth rate. Um, uh, mythical Pokemon are medium slow. I don't know why, but like, I guess it's nice. Like, Mew is as well. Gives them a big advantage. Okay, here we go. Jolteon 2. Let's see how I do. Technically the third beginning in this stream, but it's going to be the second full playthrough, hopefully. Unless Brock is bad. If Brock's awful, we'll restart. Specifically the 100-100 mythicals? Yeah, that's probably right. I feel like mythicals are a subcategory of legendary Pokemon, but... We don't really have a word for it, but like... There's also like OP legendaries like Mewtwo and Rayquaza, and I feel like they deserve a different categorization as well. Oh. Okay.
I'm going to try to play really well in this playthrough. So I may read chat less, and I may just focus. Do slightly less talking. And normally when I say that, I do a lot of talking, but I'll, I'll try and actually cut the talking down. My goal is not to have, um, my goal is not to have a painful stream like the, jo the Vaporeon one. While I did get it a better PB, it was not what I was hoping for, and I left kind of disappointed, but Vaporeon will have to be for another time, unfortunately. Please don't crit. Thank you. Let's go. Come on. Got a heal for the blackout training, then I'll deposit the Pidgey to speed up the progress. Oh, well, that's depositing my Jolteon. You cannot, in fact, spam A through that dialogue. Uh, you can get paralyzed in this game if you're on electric type. That starts in generation six where you can't get paralyzed. I mentioned it in my first playthrough. I just want like, honestly, if he crits a lot, that would be great because then this fight is faster. Sand attack in the place of tackle. Let's go. Come on. Uh, do I win in this case? I don't think I want to win. I don't want to win. I want to black out one more time. That's the advantage of having status moves on your set early into the game, because you can actually do this. No, no, no. This is intentional. We want to lose right now. It's way faster to train this way than it is to train in Verdian Forest. Just so everyone's aware. Could you please stop? No! That's not efficient. If we lose to Brock once, I will restart. The last blackout, I want to win. Come on. Now, last time I almost had PP problems here. We're not going to save because I'm going to restart if I, if I lose. Unfortunately, uh, Churro cannot be in the room. He's We have another foster cat. That foster cat is in the room with me right now, and uh, Churro has been fighting with the cat, so they are separated. And Churro only comes in when I feed him because he gets fed by the other cat, and we hope it makes positive associations. And then they will eventually be able to hang out together, but who knows. Okay, well, this is going to be a restart. Wow, well, we made it to the Onyx. I guess it can never attack us? Like, no. That didn't work. Let's go again. So when you start getting really deep into optimization, the, uh... Um, honestly, I'm not really a dog person. I think that, like, a dog is just, like, not the type of energy that I that I vibe with, but it's totally it's great that you love dogs, like amazing. Um anyways, like when you're optimizing the Brock split, it ends up being uh 
the case that you usually have to restart quite a bit. The There's not a lot of Pokemon that can make it by him really consistently every single time, even water types, because water types want to go in. Um, also, I don't want to start a giant like cats versus dogs thing. Also, terrible movie from when I was a kid. I remember seeing the ads for that and like the uncanny valley of like making actual cats and dogs mouths look like they're talking oh i don't don't do that just <laughs> please just make an animated movie we want to see animated cats and dogs talk we don't want to see an actual cat have its mouth open and say something it looks really weird and super scary i don't want that in my life anyways yeah uh don't want to make a cats versus dogs chat but i i do want to encourage people to have pets pets are awesome there did i appeal to everyone <laughs> uh but yeah brock like it tends to be the case that even with water types you want to go in on minimum battles with water types and then he can usually get you because you're slower so there's just like the optimal strategy for speed tends to not be the optimal strategy for consistency against brock it's rare that those two things overlap are you kidding me Okay, well, the double crit was good, because I didn't knock it out. It's terrified. By the way, you do less damage with critical hits when you're a lower level, so... My Jolteon is not getting much of a boost from crits at this current level. What song is this? Pikachu's Beach. What's your opinion on mice? I had a lot of hamsters when I was a kid. I always wanted, like, a mouse or a rat or something like that. I guess this is an appropriate conversation. Maybe I shouldn't have shut it down. Um, we should probably decide, is Jolteon a dog? Is it a cat? Is it a fox? Um, what is it? I always say dog, but um, I know that some people don't like it when I say dog. They tell me that I'm very wrong. Uh, and then other people tell me I'm very wrong and they say a completely different animal. So I have no idea. Uh, to me... I think Jolteon to me gives more dog vibes, like Eevee for me gives more dog vibes. I, I think like Vaporeon seems a little bit more cat-like and Flareon is like somewhere in the middle. I'm not sure. Whereas like um, both like uh, Glaceon and Leafeon, they feel more like cat-like to me at least. I don't know. Also, um, the most interesting thing, just go on YouTube, make a video, let a lot of people watch it, and then when that happens, um, discover just how uh, deeply rooted people's opinions are, specifically when it relates to what a Pokemon is based on. I think one of the funniest things I've found out about uh, being a Poketuber, people's opinions, when it comes to what a Pokemon is based on, that is like core to their very identity. People will not let go of that. They're like, no, I know. It's definitely this kind of thing. Like, okay. You look it up on Bulbapedia and it says something totally different, but this person is like going to write you a small essay about what the Pokemon is actually based on. Huh. Okay, so I don't have a lot of quick attack. I might have to do extra... Okay, we're not going to save. I don't think this is a save Brock. I've decided that now. But I think for this Geodude, we're gonna we're gonna have to do three or four tail whips to save PP for the Onyx. One, two, three. I'm gonna do three, and hopefully it pays off. But we crit right away, so it didn't pay off. There we go, doing more damage. Hey, not bad, not bad. Sand attack the Onyx. Sand attack the Onyx. Let's go. Bide, bide, please, bide. No, no more screeches. Yeah, bide. Thank you. Tail whip, tail whip, bye, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, he got me there, oops. Wasn't paying attention. It should be fine. As long as a bind doesn't hit, we'll, we will be okay. A uh, bite is really weird. If you attack into it and then you use a move that doesn't fail, uh, it will it will like increase the bide counter by the amount that the move did the turn before. 
Okay, we beat Brock, 530. That's like that's like 10 seconds faster than last time. So not great, but but still a small improvement, and I will take a small improvement. Also, I'm not going to heal in Pewter City this time like I did last time uh, to save time, just because I have Thundershock PP, and it's going to get me through this entire route. Ah, uh, Tangela. Uh, the other one is Pokemon pronunciations. People are really, 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 uh, they're like really, really concerned when you pronounce Pokemon wrong. Oh, oh, that's, that's very bad. No, no, ah. Okay, again. Um, was it this channel where discussion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like many channels. Many channels have discussed the possibility for uh, for Venena to evolve into Butterfree. Just because like there's like so many design similarities, like the eyes, the antenna, the um, general like look of the Pokemon, like with like the their feet. And uh, kind of the color scheme, that sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's personally, I think it's very convincing. But I, I think, like, I don't know. Behind the scenes, my my personal opinion is that when they started making these things, they just designed a bunch of Pokemon. Uh, why not use a potion? Items are banned in my challenges. No, no items in battle. If I could use items in battle, all of this would be very different. Um, oh yeah, like Metapod maybe could evolve into Scyther. Like, see, that would make sense. Um, the thing is, is like, I think when they set, sat down to like design them and like Ken Sugimori was like drawing art, he probably was just like, I'm going to like draw a bunch of stuff and like some of it will have similar design characteristics. And then they just like looked at them all and then were like, oh yeah, these are all great. Let's put them all in the game. Um, and then you get a cast of creatures that has a bunch of things that are similar about them and a bunch of things that are different. Um, and some things uh, share design characteristics and other things uh, diverge in terms of di de design characteristics. And then later, uh, they decided like, oh, maybe we should have these things change into each other like, and, and evolve. That would be cool. And then they implemented that and assigned them all evolutions. Um, and maybe made more Pokemon to flesh out certain evolution lines and stuff like that. That's just, like, my opinion on it. I don't know if it's real. It might not be real. Uh, I came to this opinion uh, re reviewing the list of Pokemon in the ROM because they're not in the Pokedex order. And a lot of Pokemon that evolve into each other are nowhere near each other. And to me, that suggests that when these things were being all compiled into the data of the game, they were potentially recorded in order that they were created. And then, um, because like Rhydon is first, and we have a lot of sketches with Rhydon being uh, in those sketches from very early into development. That said, um... Uh, so then they would like compile the list, put it in in the order it was created in, and then later on, when they figured out, oh, we're gonna have Pokedex, these Pokemon will be related to each other, they put them in the order of the Pokedex and just rearranged things. Because there's a separate file that reorders them for the Pokedex order. And like, it, then, yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, oh, like they designed Magikarp and Gyarados at like very different times during the development process of the game. So maybe Magikarp was just supposed to be a fish. And then later they were like, well, we should turn the fish into something. And then uh, it, they like drew inspiration from mythology and like made it into a dragon fish. And then they were like, dragon is OP. So then they took away the dragon typing or never gave it the dragon typing. Like, I don't know, but I think that... Uh, I just know how my own creative process works and I can see like my own creative process in this where like you start by doing something and then as you get going you start to see the way that things will work better together and then you slowly uh, get to the final conclusion which is 
We have a bunch, we have a large cast of creatures. You can obtain all of them. You can trade to get all of them and they can also change into each other throughout the run. Can you just please miss once, please? Okay, the Sanctuary is not completely hateful. It will allow us to face Brock again for the second time, the third, fourth time, something. I don't know, we fought him a lot today. Okay, just missed you, dude. Miss. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna do three tail whips again. I liked that. Felt good. And also, um, Judith is not doing great. <laughs> wow, this is like the worst Judith ever. What is it doing? It hit us like once. That was once, I think. Terrible. Okay, and bide right away on the onyx. This is like a dream. What a dream. Not the bind. Please don't. At least no screeches. No screeches is, is a benefit. Oh, one screech. Okay. Please, no bites. No, no, not that. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. I think I have one more sand attack to throw in. Yeah, I do. Just no bites for a little bit. No bite. No, 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 no tackle. Oh, oh gosh. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Don't want to attack into the bite. Don't want to attack into the bite. Okay, got it. Basically the same time as last time. So it looks like about a five minute and 30 second Brock split is about to be expected here. That's fine. I wish I could get that a little bit lower, but yeah. Oh, I need to be using this. Even if they hit me with string shot, I'm still faster. Love it. I'll fight him even though I don't have full health. I don't want to heal. It'll take time. You want a really good time with Jolteon. Come on, come on, come on. Gotta make all the Jolteon fans proud. Okay, this next trainer is real bad, so we'll just fight without. Uh, starters have a higher gender ratio towards male, I think. It's like 75% male, 25% female, something like that. That's why. Squirrel. Hopefully we get the sub 50. I don't, I don't think so. I, I'm, I lost hope after the first run, but it would be amazing if we could. Come on, come on. Playing quite well in here. Don't walk into that guy. It's one way to mess things up real quick. It's 87.5 to 12.5. Okay, wow. Didn't realize it was that one-sided, but makes sense. Uh, do I potion before Jesse and James? I don't think so. I think the strat here is just go, but it is kind of risky. We gotta be... We'll be just, like, honest about that. Okay, the Meowth could do a ton of damage with Bite. What I crit it. Okay, well... Sure. We can we can have a fight go like that. That's That's nice. Jolteon is actually an octopus. I wouldn't be surprised. Those things can change their color like crazy. Puts all those little tentacles out the back and just makes them pointy. It's the lore we're going with now on the channel. The octopus. Punk rock opt octopus. Okay, Misty. I think if she crits with the Starmie's bubble beam, things will go badly here. But if that... Okay, crit with water gun is actually kind of bad. Because, okay, the Harden. The Harden gave me that fight, honestly. Uh, just a second. Oh, gosh. Okay, please, 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 please don't let this be bad. 
This fight messed up my time in my first run. Let's not let it mess up my time in this run. Come on. Just don't hit me with a sand attack. Oh gosh. Hate that move. Least favorite move. At least only one. One is fine. It gets really painful once you get like two and more. Just always miss. Okay, this will be fine. We'll be fine. Yep. Okay. Oh, that was like night and day compared to the last run. Last run, it got minus six on the first. The first time. My wife says it's a hair. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so many things. What else could it be? It could be like a deer, maybe. It's got four legs. And yes, if that's your criteria for deers, a lot of things could be deers, but that's true. A lot of things could be. All right, this is feeling good. Let's crit the Nidoran. It's the only way to get a one hit. <laughs> yes! <gasps> yes, Jolteon! Good job. All right, this is great. I can only get one hit if I crit. Okay, I didn't crit, but it's fine. We're going to heal after this, just in case. I could just, like, continue, but... Uh, why have I never said it's a coyote? Yeah, coyote, it does kind of look like it would be a coyote. Coyote? Coyote? What is the pronunciation? Are they both valid? I don't actually know now. I'm really bad at this stuff. Like, pronunciations and words? Oh, it's hard. Uh, attack. I just wanted to miss. Uh, there we go. I want to get it, like, low enough that you'll do decent damage while it's setting its defenses back up so that it doesn't take forever to knock out. Uh, I don't want the Thunder Wave TM. It's a waste of time. I have to teach it, and, like, teaching it takes time, and picking it up takes time, and then once I've learned it, I'm going to use it for, like, what, one battle? Maybe Surge. It, I could see it being useful against Surge because you outspeed. So you just immediately status his Pokemon, and then from there the fight is a little bit more consistent. But overall, I just don't think it's it's relevant in this run. Coy Coy Coyote? I don't know. Is that maybe? I could see it being that. Coyote. Coyote. Okay. Thank you, Squirrel. Let's go. Come on. Oh, yeah. Remember the drowsy? The drowsy was bad last time because it got hypnosis. Hopefully it doesn't get hypnosis this time. Gosh. Hate this thing. <laughs> At least I crit it. The, the sleep was less long as well. In general, this run is just much cleaner. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the Rocky Mountains as a kid, and there were, like, coyotes or coyotes, like, all over. Coyotes? I don't know how to say it. Anyways, the small dog things. There was a lot of them. You'd always hear them at night. Oh, that crit was great. Jolteon has the ability to speed up a lot of the battles just by getting one or two crits here and there because it's ridiculous speed. Come on. Oh, that's annoying. I have to knock this, star you out slowly because it takes time now. Oh well.
Oh, hopefully don't get burnt. Or burned, sorry, burned. The One of the pieces of commentary Van Man always gave me when reviewing my videos was you said burnt, it's not food, it's a Pokemon. Say burned. Okay, yeah, yeah. There are so many like little word things like that that I now think about in relation to Pokemon that I'm like very specific about just because I want to make sure that I get it right. Ah! Uh, twice in one day? No! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Hey, the crit there was great. Perfect. Also, the, the cat that's here, the foster cat, made like the cutest little like sound, like right as soon as the uh, burn happened. Like, yeah, that's how I feel too. Burn heal new strat. No, no, no. Burn heal. You get the full restore because it's so rare that that happens. You just hope that it doesn't happen. Okay, Blaine, be nice. Be kind. Come on. Well, the crit right away is great. And then paralyze, and then crit. Okay. So, Blaine was really easy. I'm like two and a half minutes ahead. We were like, this is going really well until that menuing right there. Just don't look at that. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, the like burp noise. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good cat noise. Churro does that whenever he sees me. He like looks over at me and then he does the little like noise and then uh, and then he stretches out and just like stares at me. It's really cute. Oh, not great. That's why you put the bike in slot one because you can just spam A through that dialogue and. You'll be fine. You called Surge Blaine. Oh. Oops. <laughs> yes, crit the Oddish. Yes. Well, and hit the Bell Sprout. Come on. Oh, no. I'm one speed slower than the Bell Sprout I was until I got glitched down to one speed, but. That's why we buy the Paralyzed Heal. It's very rare that you've used both the Paralyzed Heal and the Full Restore by this point in the playthrough. That's like, almost that that never happens. Ah, I touched the grass. I touched the grass. Just because the Q-Bone. Normally, not worth it, but this time, Q-Bone... Paralyze. Oh! Oh no, 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 Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, by the way, the Oddish really, really, really likes to use sleep powder, so I'm gonna go for rest against it. Apparently it doesn't like to use sleep powder right now. Normally, you see, it likes to use sleep powder. I told you it likes to use sleep powder. <laughs> uh, I wasn't lying. So yeah, slow bone was a close call. Yikes. I haven't quite mapped in Van Man's rooting there yet. He mentioned it to me on a stream about a month ago, maybe. I I'm going to change it. I it's more efficient and better overall, but I haven't just put it in yet. Uh... Unless it crits, I'm fine. It, it misses. See, that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to just sand attack and then it misses. That's what's supposed to happen. Last time just wouldn't. 
We're good. Okay, faster self-destructing hiker. Everything is going well. Don't say that because then things go badly. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm asleep. I'm like, why am I not attacking? I'm asleep. Easy. Easy. No. Oh. Oh, we're good. Could fight that guy. But I'm preferring this guy because he's... I, I think I'll two-hit the muck. And I don't want to two-hit the muck. I want to one-hit everything. So I'll one-hit these, these three instead. Not bad. Pretty good tunnel, honestly. Uh, the Clefairy Trainer is terrifying. She can sing you, and then you lose so much time. And sometimes, if you play badly, or, um, you're not careful, she will KO you. I do not want that to happen. So I invested in too many items last time in this location. Yeah, you can't switch to tank to super effective moves in general, that's true. The AI picks its move uh, after you've already done stuff. I forgot this, by the way, last time, so I'm going to get it this time. That's why I didn't get as many irons. Or protein. Sorry, protein. Protein, protein, protein. If you walk around the Carrington, <laughs> yeah, the Clefairy Trainer, are you, or the Jigglypuff Trainer, are you talking about on Route, um, Route 3? Does feel like you're guaranteed. I'm going to get the HP up and stuff now, because I know I can get one more vitamin with the nugget that I remembered. I have so much money. Look at this. Look at that. Don't need that then. Which is nice, because counter is not great to pick up. Oops. Bought two fresh waters. I want to buy one after, so I don't have to go slowly through this dialogue, but it's not the hugest thing in the world. Okay. By the way, you max on protein faster than the other vitamins, so I'm going to buy one iron and full protein. So that I can still use the uh, Safari and Sylph proteins. Because I don't want to have one of those be ineffective and then pick it up, which will just waste time. But minimizing damage from the Sand Slashes is, is a good idea. Very sad. See? Remember when I said... Remember when I said that I'm going to forget to pick it up because I have muscle memory? Yeah, I forgot to pick it up. Bet everyone's screaming at me in chat right now. Pick up the Pidgey. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Bad play. It's okay. Let's go. Let's go. really sad thing about double kick as a coverage move is that it doesn't actually do more than body slam unless it's super effective. So really its only advantage is that sometimes it can be super effective. But just in regular situations, like you're not wanting to use double kick instead of body slam. It's a little bit sad. 
so much time wasted, gotta reset. Yeah, that's how it that's how it feels though. Like when I'm playing these for the videos, when I make a mistake like that, like my brain is genuinely just like this is this run isn't good enough. Like it can't go in the video. But there's always mistakes, and uh, that's been the hardest thing to come to terms with making this kind of this stuff and doing the runs in the way I do them. Like, of course, you can just change the format of the runs and make it more appealing for you as like a creator, where you're just like, well, I'm always going to do a tool assisted speed run. Then I never have to like worry about going back and doing it again. That said, I'm sure that um, if I did tool assisted speed runs, if I was posting them, I'm sure people would find problems in them all the time and I'd be like, oh, I should go back and do it again. So I think it's just the nature of being under a lot of eyes. When there's a lot of people looking at you, there's a lot of criticism and that's not a bad thing. Again, like hopefully uh, through that criticism, you can improve. And, and I hope to improve through, through criticism. I don't want to take the heal. Oh, I didn't get reflected. By the way, that's the fallback moment. When you realize you've forgotten it, you can get it there. <laughs> and it doesn't waste very much time, because you're already there. I have to say the bonk counter is like one of the... It's not here right now because I had a lot of tech problems. So there are... I am operating under what is like... Functional, but not ideal at the current moment. I like using PP ups on Thunderbolt because it gets three uses every time you use one, which feels very good. Oh my gosh, we're having some like numbers where it's like <laughs> you could use a fraction. Yeah, use fractions. Fractions are helpful in these cases when numbers have to be rounded. That's frustrating. I don't know how I didn't notice that. I think I have a chance to one hit with body slam here. Oh no, I don't. Never mind. Slower, but this is nowhere near the kind of problem that I had on Nugget Bridge last time. So, well, there's going to be time losses here and there. Pin missile, no, thank you. Uh, where is the? Well, we can do this, and then we can do that. Keep going. I'm gonna remember the tree this time. Remember the tree. Remember the tree. Remember the tree. This tree. This is the this is the Smash Math tree. He is the one who showed me the tree. Uh, very unintentionally, he was just cutting the tree to get through the area to go to the safari zone. And then I looked at it and I was like, why have I not been cutting that tree this entire time? and realize that I have been playing terribly and taking an extra 10 steps or so. And now I will take less steps every playthrough. Less steps, less frames, less time, more winning. Once again, I'm like, I'm gonna talk less than I talk all the time. Uh, we should fight Erica now. Level 36 is definitely higher to, high enough to fight her. Yeah, apparently no one knew this because I have not got a comment on any of my videos and I've showed that footage for sure. I have not got a comment, or I think I have at least, but I haven't got any comments on my videos or my live streams saying like, hey, you should not do things this way. Um, which suggests to me that other people are unaware that it should be done a different way as well. I don't think pin missile's worth it for Erica. I want double double kick. And like, what do I replace? The problem is what do I replace? Like there's no good option. At the current time at least. It's like, 
So replacing anything is painful. Obviously you have to keep Thunderbolt. Obviously you have to keep Rest. The champion's like impossible if you don't have it. Oh no. Sleeping Gen 1's real good. Oh, I still win. Um, uh, the only other option is don't take Rest for the self-destructing hiker. But I prefer to just not have a reset there and then have a slightly sketchier Erica fight. Like, this was not the worst. Yeah, clearly you can b delete T-Bolt, yeah. I don't, I don't think waiting on rest is a good idea. You, you, lucking through the self-destructing hiker does not feel good. Like, you can do it with just sand attack, of course. But... Uh... I don't think the advantage is worth it. Like, we have to, we have to, like, it's like, you can, but is the advantage worth it? Like, one reset on the self-destructing hiker or one reset on Erica? Like, I don't know if it changes anything. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong. Let me think about this for a second. Like, the advantage of using the candy, or that using the rest, not using rest on the hiker is that you actually have a chance to bail on the run earlier if you want to. I don't think holding off on teaching Thunderbolt until the self-destructing hiker is a good idea. Because you are opening your inventory at that time anyways, and you want to take advantage of it. <laughs> I have Thunder later. Yeah, thank you. That's... Yeah, that, I really want to do that. Yeah, I, I think I'll still one hit the slowpoke. I'm optimistic about that, but I just don't really want to. I would rather just teach it right away when I the inventory is open and just be done with it. Do you see a difference between your gameplay between offline attempts and streams? Yeah, for sure. My gameplay is way better when I'm offline. My gameplay is way better when I'm offline. I don't have music on and I don't have um, like a podcast going or something. And I just sit there and focus on the run like that is the peak. I try to do that now for final attempts. Just get in the zone, focus, and do it. Treat it like it's a like a like you're winning a championship at a sports match or something like that. Just get as focused as possible. Uh oh. Well, well. It's not very good right now, but it, it, I am staying asleep for forever. Oh, that was a long sleep. I'm just glad that wasn't a reset because I didn't save. I'll use the super potion now because I want to fight this guy and I um, I want to just free up my bag a little bit. You don't want to, you, you don't want your bag to be stuffed. That's what I'm trying to say. But you do want there to be, like you you. You want stuff to be in there if you um, if you don't need to pick anything up. But if you need to pick something up, you want to have some open slots. And I think just getting rid of it now is, is the best play so that I don't run into problems later on. Okay, right, let's go. come close to 50? I hope so. That would be amazing. Oh, I'll heal after this fight. I am I have enough health that I'm not scared. Okay. Now rival. Pray for me that sand attack is merciful. Okay. Come on. Come on, sand slash. Please, please, please. Let's go. Yes, crit, sand attack, darn. Okay, well, the crit is okay, and I got a sand attack once, but I didn't get any damage, so I, I think we're okay, as long as we don't, like, completely drop the ball right here with this confusion. Come on, hit the cadaver, please, please. Okay, good. Uh, we should be fine now. The flare, okay, crit the flare, nice. Very good fight, very good fight. What's that rocket's name? I call him the Hypno Rocket. There is the Hypno Sandwich, and then there's the Hypno Rocket. And then there's also, like, uh, Rocket Man outside of Cerulean City, uh, who has a drowsy. 
And then also there is the, um, what's his name? The guy in Koga's gym. I don't have an official name for him, but like he's like the terrifying hypno guy. Like the guy that when you accidentally run into him, you just immediately restart the playthrough because his level 30 hypno just like instantly psychics you and you lose. I hate that thing. By the way, in Gen 1, when you crit with one hit, you crit with all the hits. Great. Badge boost me. Thank you. Oh, just barely not enough to three hit. The double the double tail whip wasn't wasn't what I needed. Okay, so this time I'm gonna fight Sabrina now. Because I already fought Erica. Oh come on. And my waypoint was set to Saffron. Now I did discuss these trainers and I was going to fight them, so. Rocket Man, you mean Elton? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why I like that name. Okay. All right, Serena, please don't be bad. Please, 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 please. We don't need a crit psychic. Let's just, let's go. Let's go. Come on. No. That's bad. That's very bad. Like, okay, well. Sure. Thanks, Psywave. Terrible attack. I love how when she gives the TM to you, she's like, it's a powerful psychic type attack. It's like, no, it's not, Sabrina. <laughs> it's a terrible psychic type attack. Uh, Koga time. Uh, yellow's mid game is much more interesting than red and blue's because there's actually a choice here. Like, fighting Sabrina makes sense with a Pokemon like Jolteon, whereas with other Pokemon, it makes absolutely no sense. Like a Psychic type, for example. Like, why would you fight Sabrina first? She's gonna stall you out with recover and stuff. It's gonna be awful. Whereas fighting Koga it makes a ton of sense because he's poison type specialist. Um, but then the bug type often complicates things, and I think that's why it's more interesting than red and blue. Please just hit. Uh, just don't glare me. I, I don't want to have to heal it. Ah. Uh, well, we're fine. I'll heal before Koga, so I only have to do it once. I don't. I don't want to do a side wave only run. That sounds like awful. I don't even know if it would be that interesting either, because like, how do I narrate it? Like, maybe I'd do that for like a charity stream or something. But like, I can't see myself doing that as like a let's do this. This is going to be a fun video. Like. No one's going to enjoy watching that. Okay, Koga. Oh, let's take care of him. Crit, please. Nope. Oh, double team. That's bad. Oh, very bad. Three, four. Four double teams. Well, oh, gosh. Well, we still did it. All right. See, like, Rage rage might be a little bit more hilarious, but I kind of want to do a run where I use only bad moves. So, like, I define beforehand what all the moves are that we consider to be truly awful in Generation 1, and then I'm only allowed to use those moves. Oh. No! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. Well, I, I used the wrong one, but luckily it didn't fly me somewhere, so I didn't lose that much time. I'm just going to go and get this candy now. It technically doesn't matter when you get it. Because you're flying either way. Yeah, like, String Shot, Splash, Razor Wind, Constrict, Rage. Um, Like, I'm not sure about Sky Attack, because it is pretty bad, but it deals a lot of damage, so... But it might be nice to see some sky attack love at some point. Oh, Constrict is worse than Rage, 100%. Constrict, I will have you know, is one of the worst moves in the game. Yeah, Bubble. Bubble's a bad one. That's a bad one. 
At least it has like super effective damage on like Constrict. We'll get the iron. See my uh, attack? We can't get any more vitamins in the attack stat. Ooh, that? I thought for a second there he was going to catch me and I was going to cry, but he didn't catch me. Oh no. Less than ideal pathing right there. It's okay. Alright, uh, we're going with here first. Then when I dig out of Blaine's gym, I'll just come back here. And I can fight, face Giovanni right away. As long as Blaine's gym is decently fast, we are on track for a pretty good finish. We just went over the 40 minute mark. Come on. All right, Blaine. Don't ruin this for me. Thank you. The super potion is very helpful. Take down not so much, but as long as the Arcanine just like, let's reflect. Can we ref No, critical hit. Okay, that's the first reset. Ugh. Getting my defense dropped here, not great, because the takedown is going to hit real hard. Luckily, it doesn't know to do that, so flamethrower and then I crit. All right. So only one reset to Blaine. Not the worst in the world, but I would have hoped that, that we could have got through there with a little bit uh, smoother smoother time, especially because Giovanni is next, and this fight, as, we've, as we saw before, is kind of sketch. I do have to fight that guy, so I'll have to remember to come back to him. I probably should just fight him first, but in the end it doesn't really matter that much. Oh, yeah, okay. It didn't do any damage to me. I was thinking it was going to do damage I would have to heal. Ha! <laughs> Payback time for calling Surge Blaine, yeah. Blaine was offended, so he had to... That was that. Okay, level 50. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry, I passed up Thunder, I know. The best electric type move. Okay, let's go. Come on, Giovanni. Don't destroy me. Ah, not great start, but we at least made it to the Persian and successfully mimicked double team. Sometimes you gen one miss or something on the double team mimic. It's really hilarious when that happens. Oh no. <gasps> I lived it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just no more screeches. Well, it doesn't actually matter. I think I get KO'd even if it like, no matter what, when it hits. Okay, please just, please, 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 please. Please. I'm gonna heal. Put the mistake. Come on. It's 25% chance. It's ridiculous. Okay, well. We got more badge boosts from the two screeches, so just hopefully these guys don't hit with Earthquake. Come on. Okay, please, please, please. That's bad. No, Mimicking Fissure is not viable. It has 30% accuracy. Uh, I think it would be viable if it... it, it okay. I think it would be viable if it um, had higher accuracy, but it doesn't. It's bi it's literally just fixed 30% accuracy. So then uh, I basically like ruin my chances at the rest of the fight by mimicking it. Well, the rest of the fight. You can only mimic it from the ride on. So 
you would have to somehow get by the Nidos as well, uh, which would be very hard. Challenging, sorry. It's another word I'm trying to fix. It's like hard is like describing like the density of, not the density, but like, you know what I mean? Like the toughness almost. That's also not the right word, but like um, it describes the hardness of an object. I know I'm using the definition within the, or the word within the definition. Gosh. Density is correct? Okay, yeah. Density, that's what I meant. I just get KO'd if they use Earthquake, it's fine. Oh yeah, the Duck Trio has Fissure, but like, but like, uh, mimicking it is not a good idea. Just, just because of the accuracy. Accuracy is the thing that makes that strategy invalid. Oh, <gasps> no! I hadn't been hit by Screech and I survived, but I clicked reset because instinctually I'm just like, if it hits me, I'd lose. Ah, uh, The pain. I gotta be careful about that in the future then. No, it's... but it's close. It's fine. I knew there was some... like, someone was gonna come in with the physics description and be like, actually, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I shouldn't use that word. But I'm trying to use difficult, though, to describe uh, challenge against trainers. Or challenging. Yeah, yeah, this is like, we need to do another playthrough. Like, it's, uh, this, this run's dead. We might, we might PB still, so I'll finish it, but, um, it's not going well, obviously. Well, I think what, what needs to happen for Jolteon is basically it needs to have good luck throughout the rest of the playthrough. And then when we get here to Giovanni, it just needs to get the perfect, the perfect battle right away. Unlike that. Why don't you mimic Earthquake and use Agility? It doesn't one hit the ride on that you get one hit. We can try, but uh, it won't work. So check this out. Okay, that crit, well, that was helpful. Yeah. I'm just gonna get KO'd now. Huh, well, if I crit a lot, it will work, but um, the double team strategy is better overall. To mimic, I, I think maybe we could mimic Earthquake if we go to a higher level, but I don't really want to go to a higher level before Giovanni. We'll examine the damage ranges after and confirm. Uh, I messed this up, sorry. No, mimic Fissure at a high level doesn't work either. It has 30% accuracy. Okay, please, everyone listen. It has 30% accuracy. Fixed 30% accuracy. It does not gain more accuracy when you go at a higher level. It just still hits 30% of the time and it's bad. Fissure is not a good idea. You have to hit a 30% chance hit three times in a row. Ah, uh, it's not gonna work. And Fissure does change in later generations. Uh, in later generations, it, it gets higher accuracy the higher your Pokemon is above the target, but that is not the case in generation one. So, yeah. Okay, I know here that I didn't get hit by Screech, so I can actually utilize Rest against the Rhydon. Unless it hits twice in a row with Earthquake. Yeah, that's 0.9%. Okay, there we go. So 0.9% if we mimic Fissure. Oh, this is rough. No, 0.27? Okay, so it's, it's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. I get that question a lot, though, because I think people are very confused about the one-hit KO mechanic. Or like, oh, if you're like way faster, does it improve the accuracy? Because uh, if you didn't know, um, the one-hit KO moves cannot hit targets if the target is faster than the user. But uh, that's Generation 1. Uh, but it is not determined based on speed, so like... 
If I am absurdly faster than the Rhydon, I do not have a higher percentage chance to use Fissure against it. It's still, it'll just, it can work. It just has a 30% chance to work. So we beat him after 10 resets. Or 9 on Giovanni, 1 on Blaine. Pretty bad. No, I refuse to restart. I already said, I'm not, I already said I'm going to the end. We have to, like, practice the strat, too. Like, there is, like, some advantage in restarting, but this far in, it doesn't make sense to restart because you want to practice the strategy so that you have a sense for, like, how the end game goes. You feel things out. Then the next time I go through it, I will be even more consistent at that portion of the game. So we won't have to worry about me, like, I don't know, misplaying on Lance because I did a silly thing. Whereas if I only play the end game once, then there's a higher likelihood that I'm going to misplay during that section of the game. Uh and mess up my next run if I have better luck against uh, Giovanni. Well, that was a little scary. We are okay though, I think. Yeah. Uh, well. I think you should still use Earthquake. I disagree. We're going to test it after. We'll look at the damage ranges and we'll we'll come up with an actual answer. It won't be a like it won't be an opinion thing. Like there's I think in these cases there is like genuinely a right answer and a wrong answer. I don't know if mine's the right answer yet. We'll find out though. Either way, with this run, we're going to get Jolteon a much better time than it had before the start of this stream. So even if I fail in a third attempt, uh, Jolteon fans can rejoice. I really didn't want to do a third attempt, by the way, because I actually have other things to do. And I was hoping this would be like a three-hour stream. We're three minutes away from that. Uh, do I skip this guy? I skip this guy, yeah. Yeah, Annie, I can see your message. Yeah, I do have the replay function available, so we can't always go and do Bide against the self-destructing hiker. I don't think Bide will be as good, though. Like, because it doesn't solve the health problem. You either, you need Bide Rest. It's like Bide Rest or Sand Attack Rest or just Sand Attack. Those are, I think, the choices. Or Rare Candy to Double Kick, but that's a bad choice because then Giovanni and everything in the late game becomes harder and we, uh, hopefully we see why that is not a good call. Like the Self-Destructing Hiker, you'll get by with just Sand Attack um, earlier than it, it's worth, I think. Um, yep. Let's go, Lorelei. What's a Pokemon you're really looking, not looking forward to playing? Weedle? I think Weedle. Weedle is not going to be fun. Like, there's not much strategy with Weedle. It's just pure brute force, and, like, obviously it can't win. We know it can't win. Uh, but we need to see how long it takes to get to the point where it just definitely can't win. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other things that need to be determined. Uh, Weedle's not going to be fun. <sighs> really annoying when it goes for Dig After You. Well, 
This run went from like decent at the beginning to like not very good by the end. Oh my gosh. When I'm doing these, it's kind of like, I have a plan in my head and I want to get a run that's fairly close to what the plan is. But that's like the goal. It's like, I can see how it can all come together and work out and then I want to get a run that's like fairly representative of the plan that I, oh gosh, fairly representative of the plan that I put in place. Oh. No, I need rest for the champion. You can't win without rest on the champion. Because you have red health once you beat the Sand Slash. And you can't one-hit everything else. So it feels way too risky to delete rest. You either have to not use rest for the self-destructing hiker, save it for the late game, and then don't use rest earlier on into the playthrough, which potentially could be uh, the choice. I, I just... I, I think honestly that is the choice. I think just like, don't... Don't overinvest in the self-destructing hiker. If you have to have a painful reset there, just take it. Don't worry about it. Then move on. Then just use rest of the champion when you need it. Okay, so the last run was better. That's encouraging because what that suggests to me is that we're starting to push up against, like, the kind of ceiling for Jolteon. And we're just now, we're looking for luck to align in a way that will... Oh, I don't have Reflect. Luck to align in a way that uh, we can win. Where is it? Okay, reflect. And then we hope. Let's see. Let's do it. Come on. There we go. Paralyze. Now just miss an attack or crit me. I am not allowed to use X attacks, unfortunately. Items in battle are against are against my rules. Unless you're referring to the Weedle playthrough, in which case we'll probably see some uh, X attacks then, yeah. Because I know I can't do it without items. Yeah, this in case it hypnosis his first turn, which is always annoying. Oh, just not gonna leech seed me? If it doesn't leech seed me, this whole fight becomes so much easier. Okay, it's gonna now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's waiting for it. Mimic doesn't work here now. It, it fails. Because, like, what are you gonna mimic? What do you mimic in this fight? I like, that's the, the genuine question for this battle is, like, what do you mimic? Oh, Robert, we know that Jolteon can. We Ike the Killer has already got a sub-50 minute Jolteon time. He got 48 minute. It's like 48 and like 30 seconds or something like that. They can definitely do it. I'm like, for sure it can do it. We just haven't got there yet. Uh, I don't want to chance the Flareon. I gotta heal against it. I'll knock this out, then I'll heal on the Flareon, because it could fire spin me, and if it fire spins, then I'll uh, wake up fast. Oh, will crit me with quick attack, okay. Reflect, Thunderbolt. Ah, this run is still gonna be better than uh, my Jolteon run from before. 58 minutes and 27 seconds, 14 resets, level 69. Mimic Hypnosis. How do you beat the Jolteon? How do you beat the Jolteon? So, we mimic Hypnosis. What's our moveset then? Reflect, Body Slam, Rest? Mimic? 
Mimic Hypnosis win the fight with only Body Slam? That does not seem convincing to me. Yeah, and Slash is not a good idea. Like, if you want to survive three hits from Earthquake, you have to set up Reflect. So turn one is always Reflect. If you don't set up Reflect, the Sand Slash 2 hits you. So you can't do anything. In that case, you would have to one hit it. That's the only other option. <laughs> yeah, when Scott uses Hypnosis. Stop using Hypnosis when Scott doesn't use Hypnosis. What about mimicking Hypnosis? Yeah. It's real. I don't know. It, it's an it's a neat idea. Like everyone, everyone, I really appreciate all the different suggestions because it makes me think about the game in a different way. And um, I'm being stubborn right now because I think I have the right strategy, but I I could still be wrong. Let's go back and look at Giovanni because maybe I am wrong here. Okay, so right now, let's see Earthquake. Okay. So Earthquake is decently good at knocking the Doug Trio out, but as you can see, once we knock the Doug Trio out, stuff becomes very bad against the... F like, I don't even have a two hit on the ride on if I don't crit. So now I know people were like, use agility. So we will, we'll add agility into the mix here and we'll see what happens with three agilities. So three agilities gives me one hit on Nido Queen, Nido King, and a two hit on the Rhydon. Do recognize that in order to mimic Earthquake, I will maybe take a dig or an Earthquake, potentially get Sand Attacked. Then the Persian can also hit me with a Screech, which will end the game. Uh, no, I knock it out with Thunderbolt. Uh, the Nido Queen could potentially survive an Earthquake, but probably going to one hit both those. So I might make it to the Rhydon with full health. In which case, it'll do 65 to 70% damage if I don't have um, Reflect Up. That said, um, I have no way to recover health and setting up Agility three times is like, where do I set it up? I think I have to set it up against like the Persian. I'm not sure. No, 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 double kick. Um, maybe double kick, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about double kick? That's what I... I think that's what I did. I think that's what I did. What? Oh, yeah, it's a move. I need to get a move. Well... I'm pretty sure double kick double a, a double team was what I did. Learning Mimic. Uh, sorry, just a second. I save all my roots and then when I change them, I, I uh, make sure that I uh, change them in a different file so I have the original file at all times. Oh, I need to rec stop recording my replay. Uh, okay, so double kick. We'll teach double kick for Giovanni now. We'll see how much it's going to do. Double kick is going to three hit the Rhydon. So we have less time in battle against the Rhydon. Maybe just teach Mimic on top of Body Slam. No, but then how do I beat the champion? You have to have Body Slam for the champion's Sand Slash. Like, I think you do this fight restless. What about Flash? No, you can't get Flash because you need to obtain... You need to catch Pokemon to get Flash from the aid. That'll take time. Maybe teach a Mimic... No, no, yeah. 
double kick sounds bad. Granted, I'm going to set up six double teams, so that's not actually... This is not representative data. Please ignore everything that I just said. We're going to add double team in. We're going to boost it six times, and then we're going to see what double kick does. It's going to be great. Yeah, now it has a 97% chance to two hit the ride on. I don't actually know if that is one hit from double kick or if that is, no, that's one turn kill. So I think if auto has programmed this correctly and the text is correct, then I should two turn the ride on, only giving it only giving it one one turn to attack. No, 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 Ike, Ike, one of his least favorite moves is rest. So he tries to avoid using it at all costs. He does end the game with the same set that I'm ending with currently though. No, 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 no thunder, no thunder, no thunder. It has 70% accuracy, it's not worth it. I don't think you need, I don't think we need Reflect. Honestly, I don't think we need Reflect. I think we just knock the deck trio out, mimic double team, set up. Hopefully we get set up. If we don't, we just restart, that's fine. Uh, once we get set up, then we have double kick. Double kick in combination with body slam like i think what what's the body slam percent chance to ko one two three four five six body slam is going to two hit both of the nitos so they have three chances they have three chances to roll for earthquake yeah justin what you're saying here is correct but it's you're minimizing a lot of the complexity and the like peripheries i think I do think that's the generalization, though. You can keep the same strat, just don't teach rest until champ, and it's easy. I would say, it's not easy. It is. It's going to save pain at Giovanni for sure. Mimic sand attack. Yeah, that's the play. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, I'm getting really tired. I can only do one more run. If we fail, we fail. It was a noble attempt. And then we have to move on to other things. So this is going to be it. We're going to do Jolteon one more time. Pray for better RNG. Um, I'm just going to put you on the loading screen for a second. I'm just going to go grab uh, some water and stuff. I'll, I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Are we ready? <laughs> One last time. My fifth overall Jolteon playthrough, let's do it. Go in focus mode for this one. Oh, never mind. I forgot to start the replay. I want the replay file just in case it's amazing. If it's amazing and I have the replay file, I'm going to feel good about myself because then I can always remaster it later if I change things and make them better. Nav, I think you underestimate the number of times I'm willing to play a game to get a good result with a Pokemon. Focus mode cancelled. No, no, no. Re-engage. Re-engage. Figured out my move ordering there because quick attack is useful more in the early game especially with the blackout training so I just want to put it in slot one right away the only battle I'm going to be using thundershock in before Brock is the mandatory bug catcher and that's one motion Scott used focus energy his critical hit rate got divided by four. Please no. Please don't crit. Yeah, focus energy is fixed in stadium. Didn't mess up my deposit. Blackout training, let's do this. I wanted I did the tail whip to ensure that I knocked the diglet out on the first battle because it got too close last time. Uh, yeah, I previously used my last strategy with Jolteon, the one that got the uh, one hour and one minute time, was a, uh, was a, uh, what's it called, um, toxic strategy. It's a toxic is very good with, uh, with electric types, which is hilarious. Because it gives them, they can like set up reflect on the sand slash. They basic, it's basically reflect toxic, then spam rest, and the sand slash gets taken care of by the status move. But um, there are, of course, downsides to doing it this way, which are uh, if the sand slash crits, you lose. Because it one hits you. And its crit rate is like, what? I don't know, like 14% or something like that? So the, the ability to survive a total of like... I don't know, it ends up being like seven or eight turns in battle. The ability to survive seven and eight turns in battle against the Sand Slash is just quite low. Oh, got me. Well, that might be a restart.
No, I think... No, no, I can 100% get this under 50 minutes. 100%. Because Ike did it under 50. It's possible. Maybe not with this route, but uh, it's possible. I think it is possible with this route, though. Ike's playthrough is even one reset, so there is margin for error. I don't know. I think I don't know if it needs a lot of luck. I think it needs some luck, but we are stacking the luck in the favor of the electric type. Like this is like uh, every like it, every playthrough. I feel like we we've made significant improvements so far. So I'm not I'm not writing off Jolteon as like completely inconsistent yet. I, I have, like, I have a lot of faith. And doing multiple attempts is really, really, really good at diagnosing consistency problems. You start to see the run just, like, so much clearer by the time you're on, like, the fifth playthrough. Whereas, like, I never get the same level of detailed understanding when I do, like, three or four playthroughs. But, like, when you get to, like, five, six, seven, it's, like, everything starts, like, you see the matrix code. You're, like, oh, like... I didn't realize that Blaine is a problem once in every, like, eight attempts. But, like, now I see it, I see why, and I can make, like, a small change that will make him better and just slightly more consistent in that area. Or you notice a problem, then you reroute something in the mid-game and you recognize, oh, there's actually a lot more time that can be saved in this particular area of the game. Okay, I'm going to go back into my focus mode. I'm going to two sand attack the sand true when I want to knock it out. I really want to destroy its accuracy. I can't actually spam this. Spam this. It's a waste time. It doesn't shake the screen as much as tail whip. I think it's faster. Yeah, I want to win on my next attempt. It's three blackouts against him. Four is one too many. Okay. This is already better luck. Oh, come on. Okay, thank you. Whew! Did it. Let's go. Come on, Rock. Don't ruin my day. Huh. Kind of a bad you, dude. Too many crits. Oh, well. 
Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's six. Counted wrong. I gotta, like, not get hit. It's the only way. Yeah, Elite Four Blackout training is really good. It's really good. Okay. Come on, come on. I'm feeling so tired. You can technically buy less an antidotes, by the way, but it's it's always a little bit risky if you do it that way. The two quick attack Pidgey, or maybe three, no two. That can break out, I think, at that much health, by the way. It's not quite enough damage, but you have a really good shot of getting it. Yeah, everyone, if you like my stuff, and I truly do appreciate it if you are here checking out some retro Pokemon content, um, consider liking the stream because it does help me reach more people. And by doing that, we can get even more ideas about why rest is not the correct choice or why I should use more double edge. Also, seeing a lot of little thumb marks makes me happy, so you have that power. Oh no, did I mess this up? Nope, <laughs> I min-maxed it, intentional. I think you should use more Mega Kick here. Yeah. You know, I, I really want to use Mega Kick. I wanted to use it so badly with Charmander. And like, I technically did, but it ended up not being the right choice. Which is disappointing. I wanted it to be the right choice. Let's go. It would be bad if I crit too much in this fight and then he didn't knock me out three times. That would be real bad. Gotta stop critting. Or stop attacking, I mean. Okay, let's beat him. Diglett should be a three hit, and then two sand attacks, one tail whip, knock the sand throat. Not getting lucky. Really not getting lucky. Come on. Come on, please. Thank you. Ooh. Let's go. All right, Brock. This is good. This is very good. This is excellent. Oh my gosh, got all the sand attacks without getting hit by tackle. One tackle so far. 
We did get to the Onyx with only one tackle once, though. So, uh, maybe it can happen again. That'd be sweet. Not two tackles. Okay, two tackles is... That's, like... This is amazing. This is nothing to be worried about. Like, feeling really good now. We're gonna get sand attacks all set up against the Onyx. Get my tail whips in. Hopefully some more bides. Yep. One there. One more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's take this thing out. Never mind. Wait. It's gonna make us bide our time. It's biding, we're biding, everyone's biding. Brock, you can't run. Deplete me. My PP is endless. He thinks he can, though. Oh my gosh. Actually, my PP is not endless. His truly is, because he's an AI. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it out. Yes! <gasps> Did it! Did it! It was three seconds faster than my best time, I think. Uh, I think my best time was like 5.30... Or five, sorry, yeah, 5.30. No, not this. Uh, yeah, Brock is behind like electric and normal types being severely held back in this game. He is like the soul. He's like, yeah. Like some serious like typism going on. He's just like, hey, all of you, you're going to be terrible in the early game and lose like 15 minutes when you're a shelter or whatever. Because Shelter only has Tackle. Boy, that's fun. Technically, it gets Withdraw, but, like, that really helps. When you have a move that's 95% accurate, that has 35 PP, and his Pokemon have more than 35 hit points. Hopefully, you can see the problem with the numbers. Okay. Okay. I did skip the heal there, intentionally. I think I can do it without it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Sorry. If it gets sticky, I can use Tail Whip in combination with uh, Quick Attack to do some damage. Extra damage. But I don't think we'll need that. That's a badge boost. Is great. But yeah, I'm fine. I've got more than enough PP to go the distance to last in this cave. Okay. Actually, I really like it when I finish an area and my PP is all single digits. It's very satisfying. Like, look at this. Look at this. This is about to be so satisfying when I come out of the cave. Oh, and I don't even have to heal that poison because I have 34 health. So I can make it to the center first. Look at my PP. It's so good. So good. Oh, yeah. Perfection. Mm. Great early game. Now, do we just not save on Misty? I'm feeling the no save on Misty. I'm feeling the no save on Misty. It's a terrible idea. Uh, but she hasn't been a problem yet. Ah, let's do it. <laughs> If I lose, I'm so sorry. This is like, it's just bad play if I lose. Like, you should just save and like occasionally take a reset here, but... Oh, yes, the paralysis. We got it. Do do it. That feels good. All right. Okay, please, Sandshrew, do not ruin this for me. Do not ruin this for me. Thank you for not hitting with sand attack. Okay, come on, come. Is this the only time I made it through without a single sand attack there? I think it is. This feels so good. I bet the Eevee's gonna sand attack me. No, it's not. It's not. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Jolteon. Yeah, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. That's right, JJ. We're risking it. 
<laughs> we ball. Yeah, I know we do this. Let's do this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, Victory Bell has the fastest Missy split. It's like six minutes. <laughs> it's like ridiculously good. Victory Bell is like going to be unseated. It, maybe Mewtwo will beat it, but I think that's the only thing. Victory Bell is so good. Also, Austin did another Victory Bell the other day playthrough, and he, he just sent me the screenshot and said, I, I think we actually think Victory Bell is worse than it is because he got a better time. Um, so, like, Victory Bell is is yeah just obscene. Come on, come on. I'm not getting enough crits here. Can we have more crits, please? More crits. Jolteon, you're a critting machine. You mint crit crits. Mint crits. It's kind of hard. Come on, more crits. Oh, come on. No more defense curls, please. Just miss tackles. Miss some tackles. Miss some... I hate this guy. Miss some tackles. Thank you. There we go. One more. Let's go. Let's take him out. This guy's slow, but not a threat. Just annoying more than anything else. Once you get by him. Here's a trick. Use the elixir, then spam A, and you go back to potions, and you can get through the inventory really quickly without a lot of thought. Because when you use up the elixir, it resets your cursor to the top of the inventory, and if you have played the early game like I play it with uh, Pokeball slot 1, so you can use it right away, then uh, potion gets shuffled up to slot 1, and so you're, you know that every time your cursor is reset, you're always on your healing item at the top. And then later in the playthrough, I want not my healing item to be at the top, but my bike. Don't forget to grab Pidgey out of the box. I appreciate the reminder. Yeah, crit. There we go. Critting machine. Let's go. Don't crit when you're going to walk knock it out in one hit anyways. That's, yeah, yeah, another crit. Save two turns in that battle. Excellent. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good Thursday too. Thanks, Dylan. I'm having a good one. If as long as uh, we clock in with a better jolty on time, really want sub 55 minutes. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. I know we can. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's just not get um, hypnosis here. Like hypnosis is the worst. Not this time. So I went for sand attack because hypnosis already has trash accuracy. And if you lower it, it's it's just never going to hit. Or it feels like it's never going to hit. So I thought that would make that maybe a little bit more consistent. Yeah, that trainer's dialogue also makes me think about the I have a girlfriend era of dialogue on the channel. Crit. No. It's okay. Let's not get burned. Can we... Oh, sorry. Let's not get burned. How'd it get burned? How'd it not get burned? That's the question right now. I checked my PP there. I checked my PP there. I want everyone to know that. I did look at my PP in that moment. Because before I didn't, and I ran out here, and this fight took longer than it needed to take. But playing well. Feeling good. Let's go. Whew. I took that corner a little bit tight with minimal bonks, and uh, it felt scary because I didn't want to run into the lass. Um, get rid of quick attack, as we have before. There isn't a reason to hold on to it. Okay, don't burn me. Come on. Body slam, by the way, does more damage here. Yes, crit! Another one, please! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Let's go! Let's 
go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is good. This is very good. Crit. Yes! Ah! <laughs> come on, come on. Did I confirm its size? It's big enough. I can work with this. Don't need any other healing items. No PP ups. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't teach rest. Let's go, Surge. Do not ruin my day. Do not. Do not. I will not accept that. Paralyze. Yes! Oh, so good. Before 16 minutes. Oh, I can pin missile for Erica. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's a good idea. Everything gets better when there's no rest. My philosophy for making videos on the channel. We're teaching rest for the champion. We need it for the champion, that's why we grab it. Because we do need it for the champion. Let's go. No! Oh, ah, well. Gotta make it work now. Come on, crit. Oh, miss on stun spores. So lucky. Just poison me or something, please. Can you just poison me? That's less stressful. Okay, miss on another stun spore. Got lucky. Save to save. It was intentional. I'm a great gamer. That was me realizing what I should be saying as a person who plays video games on the internet. Uh, no, this, I'm going to do this this time. I, I don't normally do this for Pokemon, but I think it might actually be decent for, uh, for Jolteon. This fight's kind of terrifying. Now, Bone Club does not have particularly good accuracy, and I three hit this thing, so it just needs to not crit. Okay, we're good. I think picking up the super potion was a mistake in this run because I still have the max potion and the full restore. I'm playing with the, I'm playing under the, like the duress of the former two playthroughs where I did not have those advantages. I was at a disadvantage and so picking that item up was an advantage. Um, so small mistake there for me, but like that's going to cost like what, two seconds? It's not, let's not make it or break it. Running into a trainer here would be make it or break it, though, because they have rock types, so we don't want to do that. All right, pray. Pray. Just pray. That's how we do this. Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Self-destruct. Right away, miss. No, that's bad. Okay. The last one has to miss, and then we're okay. Come on. Mm. Yes! Okay! No, I didn't know. I thought that was a KO if two hit, but it, if the Graveler hits and one of the Geodudes hit, you can survive with one of the ranges. So this is uh, th that strategy is not actually as bad as I thought it was initially. I only have one PP left. God. What? I don't think you can mimic mimic. I don't think that's possible. There are no AI Pokemon that have Mimic, though, so. Not in this game. Yeah, it's all coming together. This is feeling good. <sighs> I got a huge adrenaline hit there. Focus. I'm just gonna look. Sorry, I gotta ignore. I gotta ignore chat. I'm sorry. I appreciate everyone supporting me. I'm very grateful. 
Thank you all for being here. Your support means the world to me. Let's get Jolty on a good time. Now is when the stress sets in. This is like you're playing a classical piece and you're like minute 15 and you're like, you're in the third movement. And now if you mess up, it's gonna hurt even more. It's like everything's going well. That's when you mess up. I just need to stay focused. We're doing this. I remembered the Pidgey, I know. I'm, I'm really glad that I did. So we're not going to have that annoying backtracking time either. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to get Double Kick in the place of Tail Whip, and then we'll get Pin Missile in the place of Sand Attack. Happy birthday, by the way. Don't have a lot of time to read the message, apologies. But I hope you're having a fantastic day. Hopefully my Jolteon stream is electrifying it just a little bit. Because my voice can only be described as electrifying, let's be real. Oh, doors, they're hard. Ah, uh, don't sell, <laughs> don't sell rest. That's a way to lose very quick. Small mistake there. It's not going to cost me, but annoying. Okay. I'm, I feel very happy with this play so far. I genuinely feel like this is some of my best play right now. Uh-oh. <laughs> the sand attack strikes back. That's fine, we didn't miss. I should have used Thunderbolt there on the Eevee, but... It's nice that I didn't even need to talk about these. It's nice that I didn't even need to talk about these Chandlers in this stream because they are completely inconsequential. Yeah, this is a great representation of the plan, I agree. So up until this point, but like maybe we hit Giovanni and then we have like eight resets and then it's like, okay, well. This shows how the plan can go really right and then go really wrong all of a sudden. But I'm more, more confident against Giovanni now. Technically, yes, that is an item in battle, and I have caught Pokemon in battle. I bend the rules a little bit. If you want me to be internally consistent, sorry. <laughs> this is just how I play now. Okay. Now last time, I ran out of PP. We're not going to do that again. We're going to spend the four seconds here to heal, 
just to ensure we don't have some kind of major error in a battle and get poisoned and, and like accidentally lose. Error in overlay says 15 power against Ghastly when it should be. Oh, interesting. Good, good catch. Good catch. the tile to the left of the sign that you want to go down to fight this guy and then you go one tile up while holding the brake which by the way is B a lot of people don't know that the brake is on B for the bike it does help oh the poison that's annoying I have to open the inventory it's okay I have well I used up my last antidote which is like okay it's like fine but yeah I think I would have preferred to hold on to that I have my full restore though I'm okay I'm okay Yeah, so the brake is what's allowing me to maneuver more precisely in this area. I'm going to get the other PP up and then use it more efficiently where you use all three at once. And it's on the top slot in my inventory. So I know that I can just, once it's the cursor is on Jolteon, you can just spam A and it's really quick, as you can see. Uh, there's going to be two Pokemon here, so I'll have nine uses of Thunderbolt left. And if both Weezings take two hits, I will still have enough because that's seven. So we're fine to fight this guy without healing. Everything here is a guaranteed one hit, by the way, so don't even need to worry about that. Um, uh, if we want to, like, really squeeze out more time from this run, I think skipping the PP ups might be a potential option in the future. Okay, got Pin Missile. Yes, Pin Missile is super effective against poison types in Generation 1. It's very weird. Oh, I remember the tree. Almost walked by it, but I remembered it. Uh, it's so much better. Also, it's uh, less mistake prone to do that tree than the other tree that I used to do because the other tree you have to like navigate between a door and uh, like a little like, like it's a kind of like, I don't know what to call it, like a channel where there's only one tile. It's very hard on four times speed. So it's, you're more prone to like accidentally go into the door, then you get off the bike or you're not on the bike, sorry. Um, but like you accidentally go in the door, then you have to come outside. It, there's just a lot more that can go wrong with the other way, whereas this way is, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can bonk into and that works out really nicely to path you properly to the safari zone without any issues. Okay. Um, I don't think I need to heal. I think I just fight Erica because I have good moves against her now. I'm going to save though because the Weeping Bell can catch you in an infinite wrap. I will just reset right away if one of the Weeping Bells does that. or the Actually, there's only one Weeping Bell that can do that, this one. If I reset, I'll be on top of the tree. It'll be fun. Okay, pin missile time. So this is four times damage. Yeah, this is better. Because <laughs> if it hits, it hits twice, and then it does more damage than body slam, so I can one-hit these, or one-turn these, uh, to hit. been trying to use the word there, strike, instead of hit, uh, because hit gets confused with a bunch of other terminology, and Bulbapedia uses the word strike, and I felt like, oh, maybe I can take that and, and use it. I'm not a huge fan of the word itself, but I think it's good for the dif dish, uh, the differentiation in this case. I think the Tangela should have been just like a uh, uh, body slam twice. Oh no. That's why we don't use pin missile because it's terrifying. Misses all the time. I'm gonna go. Good. Just barely. Uh, pin missile and double, uh, pin missile and body slam seem about the same there. The inaccuracy is just a pro. Oh, wait. Sorry. The inaccuracy is a problem. I don't think it would make sense for Santa Slash to learn Pin Missile. Read the chat, I'm sorry. I gotta stop. Okay, here before 30 minutes. I don't know where I am in relation to my previous playthrough. Nah, oh my god, stop picking that Carbos up. That's a waste of time. That one's just deeply ingrained. Oh yeah, that is another use for the word strike. I 
I guess I could use a word like instances, but it's not really an instance. Iterations, it's not really an iteration. Utterance, but it's not spoken. Scott, do you play D&D? I have not regularly played d and I did before, uh, but we stopped uh, in 2020 before I started the channel. So I have played, I don't regularly play though, and I'm not like, I'm not like good at it. Okay. So one thing that's nice about Jolteon is it just completely destroys all of these Pokemon that it's training against. So we don't have any slowdowns by battling trainers, whereas some Pokemon they have to like grind through a trainer and it feels awful, but you gain a lot of experience to do it. You generally don't want to be doing that, but with with weak Pokemon you, you kind of get forced into that a lot of the time I find. I'm doing this so that I don't mess up my inventory. And I saved there so the hypnosis doesn't get me in case I have the worst case scenario here. I'm just playing safe. It's okay if I reset. Like, it's okay if I reset and I played safe and I have like a 30 second time loss. That's okay. I just have to like remind myself of that. Paralyze. Oh, I generally missed there. <laughs> Not great, but it's okay. I have a guaranteed one hit on the Weezing, so. And then I have three Thunderbolts for these these Pokemon over here. I'll make it to the healer without having to use my items. You can see, like, hopefully everyone who's watching this, if you have been watching from the beginning of the stream, I'm hoping you can see just how much this root and my play has been cleaned up. Though I did forget the Reflect TM. I just realized that. It's a good thing I realized that now rather than later. Yeah, calcium are not good because you need to manage the sand slash at the end of the game. Like I would have, I think I would have bought calcium in the first run. I don't remember what I did with my very first Jolteon playthrough, but um, calcium was probably the choice that I made. Unless I was aware, but like when I played Jolteon, I was aware that the sand slash is a nightmare. So I probably did not pick. Um, I probably didn't pick. Uh, I probably picked, like, iron or something, honestly. Okay, this is not a great start to the fight. This is a bad start to this fight. And I don't have rest, so I can't heal now. Obviously, this thing isn't a steel type in Gen 1. Get me? The Flareon gonna get me? Yeah! Oh, no! No! Nah. <sighs> We've known, we've known that this could happen the entire day, so. It just hasn't yet. It's fine. I wish, I'm, I don't know, maybe in the future with Sand Attack, I should just reset when it happens on the Sand Slash to minimize time. Because losing to the Flareon is so painful. Whereas if I had just like reset earlier into the fight, it, it would have wasted less time. It's still a good run. We're, we're still okay. Uh, Body Slam does more damage than Pin Missile to the Nido Queen, just in case you're wondering. I got badge boosted once, al once already, too. So maybe three hit? Yes, three hit. Nice. Better than last time. Tiny set time savings there. I'm gonna go get Reflect now so I don't forget. Actually, I'm gonna go fight uh, Sabrina. Then I'll get Reflect. Oh wait, no, I don't need to go to get Reflect in Celadon. There is a Reflect TM in the uh, in the power plant and I am going there. So we can just get that. I just need to remember it. I need to remember where it is. I'm pretty sure I know where it is. You can obviously tell that I don't go and get it a lot. 
When I want Reflect, I buy it from the department store, not go to the power plant to get it. Okay, Sabrina could be bad uh, if she crits with Psychic. Other than that, I think I win, though. And here, I think Body Slam is more consistent than Pin Missile. Missing is just not worth it. Plus, you can paralyze like that and then sweep her team for free. Simple. Thirty seconds ahead of last run at Giovanni. Okay, that's decent. It's like it's a time savings. It's not the best. It's a time savings though. I'll take it. Last run was pretty good too, up until Giovanni. There wasn't any like major uh, time losses. Also, it's worth noting that when your run is very, very like when you're pushing for the best possible time with a Pokemon, it tends to be the case that you run into significant diminishing returns. And that means that like saving 30 seconds on the overall time is like, like it's a much harder feat to save 30 seconds than it would be like saving 10 minutes between run number one and number two. Um, I don't think I'm taking agility. No, I'm gonna go mimic double kick. Mimic double kick, no agility. Mimic double kick, it's gonna work. We just don't need rest. Rest was the thing we're cutting out. Uh, did I use all, I did use them all. Well, we still have full restores. That's why you don't wanna use your full restores easy, earlier. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, Pin Missile's not very good. There, there's like some parts of it that are nice. I think Twin Needle is the best bug move in Gen 1. Twin Needle is actually very nice, but only Beedrill gets it. We're going to the power plant after this. I want like two seconds, maybe one second. It's not that fast to, or you don't have that much uh, benefit from the bike going this short of a distance. It's more likely that the inventory time and messing up with pathing is gonna lose you time then. I intentionally delayed the super repel there because I know that I need to go and get uh, the TM. Which I believe is here. No! Well, I can run away from this thing. It's over here. That's 25. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where's Reflect? Reflect must be back here. Yeah, this is Reflect. No. Yes, that's Reflect. Yep. Okay, so it's down. Tiny bit of wasted time there. It's okay, I had a lead to work with. We just have to get better Giovanni luck. No, no, we're not beating Zapdos. No, I'm not wasting time for that. <laughs> Absolutely not. If this was a first playthrough, I would beat Zapdos, because that's fun. Oh, meh. Trying to use that repel. messed up. I have, that's what uh, happens when you have full restores. This is why I deposit stuff, because I would have been having so many item problems if I didn't deposit those three items earlier on. So 
so there is a trick here. Max repels are very close by. Forty-six is a uh, side wave, so we can get rid of that. Okay. That threw me off. My repel wore out right before I started the questionnaire, and I was like, "Wait, what just happened?" A little bit of adrenaline. Okay, we need to not lose to Blaine. We really need to not lose to Blaine. Question about Fire Red, why don't you get the leftovers? You can only get it if you have the item finder, but you need to catch Pokemon to get the item finder, so you can't obtain it. And the Snorlax doesn't hold it. Okay. Um, we're going to do this in order. And then Mimic in the place of Pin Missile. If I'm wrong about the leftovers thing in, in Gen 3, let me know. But that, I looked it up and that's what I found. And then I just didn't... <laughs> yeah, you beat Surge. Um, I just didn't, like, investigate it any further. Yeah, this is the moment of truth. You're right. Oh, I have a fresh water. Come on, please. Please. There we go. Do not, just don't slash me or something while I set this up. I just need, I just need a little bit of time. Please give me the time I need. Please, 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 please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Well, if I get hit, I die. So they have three, they have three chances. Guard spec. Paralyzed. Please. Guard spec, yes! Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, speedrunning, catching one Pokemon is like way too long. Yeah, don't want to do that. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Can I teach rest by this point? Oh, well, if the, bot the execute cannot stun spore me now that I am poisoned, which is actually an advantage. Being poisoned in this fight is, is kind of good. Getting paralyzed in this fight by the Execute is like the worst possible thing that can happen. You lose your speed and then the Kadabra and the Flareon just sort of like, hey, 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 and then they get really bad. Uh, it only gets awful there if the Flareon uh, fire spins you and then you like lose all your health to it. Yeah, Giovanni, a man sponsored by Guard Spec. Indeed. Indeed. The man and everything he owns is due to his Guard Specs. <laughs> Did you know Guard Spec can protect you from special attacks? Okay. Okay, sell it on City Advertisement. 
Pokemon. You know, the champion is, still can be extremely brutal. I'm starting to think I might have to consult with Ike the Killer and see what his route was, because it seems like he's just a little bit more efficient in the mid-game and squeezing like one or two more minutes out. Uh, it's an opportunity to learn, but we're going to obviously finish this one, hopefully get a PB, because we're definitely on track for a PB right now. Provided I don't make some, like, ca like just catastrophic misplay. Like, digging out of Victory Road, don't do that, that's bad. Pretty much Billy Mays. Max Repel is so weird here. I'm not used to it lasting that long. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, 46 minutes to the league. This is quite good. Do I have everything I need? I have Reflect. I know I have Reflect. I'm good. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, okay. <laughs> if I get another loss to Bruno, I know I didn't say anything about it last time. I was just too dejected. If I get another loss to Bruno, I'm going to lose my mind. Okay. <sighs> Terrified there that he was going to freeze the jinx. Oh, I just realized I can double kick the onyx instead of having to rely on dig. Like in this case, like double kick. It's another advan- Oh my gosh, Gen 1 missed against the Hitmonchan. Could have got frozen and then could have got defrosted by its fire fire punch because this thing's really bad. Yes, Earthquake does not hit Pokemon when they're underground in Generation 1. It's really weird. But also really nice. Okay. Right now everyone's eyes are darting around the screen. Where is it? He said the word. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Agatha. Yeah, respect Bruno save. In a run like this, you respect the Bruno. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Come on. Oh, look at the time. We're not going to do it, but we're going to get real close. Either way, it's going to be a great time for Jolteon today. I'm holding on to that, even though slightly disappointed. But it is possible. I think, uh, hopefully this stream will also prove that it is possible. Uh, what did I mess up? I messed something up. My level is wrong. My level is wrong. What did I mess up? What did I mess up? Um, I don't level up twice here. No way. Absolutely no way. What did I mess up? I missed a trainer. What trainer did I miss? The Psychics. I missed the Psychics. Missed the Psychics in Sabrina's gym. No. <laughs> no! <sighs> Gotta try. The only, the only option now. Um... Reflect in the place of double kick, rest in the place of mimic. Here we go. Let's go. Gosh, missed one, missed two trainers, and then you're not the level you need to be. Ah, gosh. Well, we can still get paralysis on the sand slash, and I, I think we still have the bodies. Okay, that's good. That's not good. 
No, it can't poison sting. It has to use Earthquake because it, it has good AI. It will always use Earthquake. It can Gen 1 miss though, so there's that. Paralyze, yes. No. Gosh. Yeah, Reflect is rough, everyone. Watch out your eyes. It's very flashy. Thanks for mentioning that. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> Terra type fly, I know, right? Ah, oh, gosh. Crit. Paralyze or um, crit is the win condition. Uh, at level 68, I do more damage and I survive three hits. Or I have a higher likelihood of surviving three hits. So it's unfortunate that we are at level 67. Level 67 is making this significantly more challenging than it should be. The only other way to do this is with Toxic. But it doesn't work out very well. You need to be level 70 at least to survive three hits very consistently. And then if the Sand Slush ever crits, you lose. Um, so like my idea here was like coming into the stream is like if we can rely on Jolteon's high critical hit rate, then we don't have to spend as long doing a toxic strategy, which will push down the theoretical like lowest possible time and save us overall time in the run, both with leveling up and with fighting the Sand Slash. Um, but as you can see, when the Sand Slash doesn't get paralyzed ever, um, yeah, Homer, I, I said level 68 is the proper level. Like I said, I, I made the mistake earlier on and didn't fight the two trainers in Sabrina's gym, which is what's caused this. You need those two trainers to get the level after Lance's Gyarados. Oh, oh no. Yeah, double edge, double edge doesn't work. We we already we already went through the damage ranges. You knock yourself out with double edge. Okay, Carlos's turn one. Maybe can it just stop moving? Like it has, it has not once missed a hit from paralysis. There we go. Miss one hit, please. Just miss one. Oh no! See, that's the damage range. That's level sixty-eight. The damage range are over a damage rounding threshold, and I would have knocked it out right there, but I didn't because level sixty-seven. No, no, hyperbeam takes too long. We already we. Hopefully, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that hyperbeam is not viable in this kind of run. It takes like five minutes to to get it. I did not fight the Sabrina Trainers, no. Um, maybe I did? Did I fight the Sabrina Trainers? Then who did I miss? I don't know who I missed then. What did I miss? Oh, did I miss the Water Cool Trainer in Victory Road because my Max Repel? I think I did because my Max Repel. Normally, I'm like, the Max Repel is just barely wearing off. Okay. No Psychic. Recover is good. Oh gosh. Terrifying, but we did it. Oh, the timer! It's, we're not going to do it under 55 minutes. Ah, so sad. Hmm. 
It's very sad. Mm. Well, we just gotta settle in. It's fine. Maybe it's not fine. Sorry. I forgot to say that Executor can cause problems when you get Leech Seed set up and it hypno hypnosis is you. Because it, it does little damage, but you can stay asleep like seven turns in a row. And then it just whittles you down little by little and like, heh heh heh. Like puts you back to sleep. You have to heal again. You lose more time. Okay, well, paralysis is nice. So I'll just take it out and rest here. Uh, keeping sand attack is not viable. Not for the sand slush at the end of the game, at least. I'm 100% sure this is the best way to defeat the sand slush. You just need level 68. It's so much easier at level 68. Well, that's that. 56 minutes and 4 seconds with 16 resets to level 68. One level too low. Too many ifs in this run? I don't think so. I don't think there's too many ifs. There are not... The ifs... The ifs before the champion are not big ifs. I'm very... Like... Giovanni... Again, like, you have to remember. Like, the goal is not, like... The goal is not make... The goal is not make the run indestructible where you always win. The goal is get the fastest time. So if our goal is to get the fastest time, then um, we have to take some amount of risk, but we have to calculate where we take the risk so we don't get stuck for a long time. In this case, if we invest more levels in defeating the champion, like, yes, we can do it, but I got a one hour and one minute time before. And if we want to be consistent, we have to go for something like that. So we bleed a bunch of time to get more consistency. If we want to have um, a faster result, then we have to start getting slightly inconsistent in calculated locations. So Giovanni, for instance, uh, in the gym, we're going to be slightly inconsistent there, having to set up double team and get by the Doug Trio. That's basically the inconsistency. And then he has three chances to roll Earthquake once I've maxed on Evasion. The other inconsistency then comes with the champion because I need to be able to uh, knock out the sand slash in two turns but level 67 is pretty painful like if I had done the cool trainer in victory road it would have been a very different story I don't know is this my PB <coughs> excuse me let me check Okay, so first run of the day was 56.14. Second run of the day, 58.27, and third run of the day, 56.04. So I am five seconds faster than the first run I did today. Heartbreaking. I think, um... I think it should be obvious to everyone that this is possible under 50 minutes. Um, I think there is some... I think there's more that I can learn about the mid-game to achieve a better possible time in that section of the game. Um, I think if I do that, I'll be one minute faster to the champion. But I do, I do truly believe that the champion requires, like, you just have to take luck. And either way, it's luck. Like, either way you luck out with this strategy by just attacking and critting eventually, or you luck out with the strategy with Toxic where the Sand Slash just never crits you. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's just talk quickly about where it's going to be replaced in the tier list. I... I think I might have my tier list. No, I don't want to bring that graphic up because it might have spoilers. It does not have spoilers. I'm going to bring it up. Okay, this is my tier list currently of all the Pokemon that I've run. Um, yeah. 
Right now Jolteon is top of D tier, so with the time under an hour and 10 minutes, uh, granted very far under an hour and 10 minutes, I was hoping to get it under 55 minutes today, but it looks like it's only going to move up one tier from this stream. So, yeah. I have not yet promoted Vaporeon on this graphic. I'll do them all at the same time, so once we finish Flareon. And I'm going to be streaming Flareon next week. Same time, same place. It'll be 11 a.m. Mountain Time right here. We will complete the trio. And uh, hopefully not have a third disappointing run, but... Um, yeah, like, uh, Vaporeon was disappointing. We got it into the S tier, though, but not quite as far as I was hoping for. Jolteon, I was hoping to get B tier at least, but not, not today, unfortunately. Okay, um, regarding the question around Platinum's RAM issue... Do I have to sample it every frame? Um, the answer is no, but if we can, we want to. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, this Saturday, we are going to Pokemon Platinum Generation 4. It's going to be fun. I'm starting the season off with Heatran, a legendary Pokemon, Fire Steel type. It's going to be fun. Hope to see you there. If you made it this far, you are incredible. Thank you so much for the support. I will see you in my next video.